Obsessed CEO Throws Himself at Me by Yvonne Hargraves on Joyread App. Chapter 1 Take It Off On an uninhabited island. Raindrops pelted down like bullets, and the crashing of the waves was like drums. With a dagger, Ariel Moore was shaving the wooden piece down with difficulty. It was as if she felt nothing as the rain continued to hit her face. She had lost contact with her family for ten years. Just as she finally found the Southalls, just as she was about to find out the truth about her mother's death and her kidnapping, a group of people who claimed to be the ones to bring her home tried to kill her. She successfully defeated them, but the ship sunk, and she ended up on this uninhabited island. It was her seventh day on the island, and she had yet to see any passing ships. Fortunately, there were many trees and plants on the island, and she had built herself a simple wooden boat. Right when she moved to work on the oars, it had abruptly rained heavily. Rising to her feet, Ariel was about to stretch when she spotted something dark by the rocks. Walking over suspiciously, it startled her to find out it was a man. The man was handsome, but his face was pale. He had an injury on his waist, and his blood was mixing together with the seawater, forming a sunset in the water. Ariel placed her finger under the man's nose. When she realized the man was not dead, she began dragging him further into the island and into the cave she had been sleeping in for the past few days. After starting a fire, she ran back out into the rain. It was only a brief while well before she returned with some herbs. You're lucky that you've met me, Ariel said as she reached out to take off the man's clothes. A quick glance at the man's waist told her that it was a deep knife wound. Did it hit his internal organs? The moment she reached out for his wrist to take his pulse, a hand grabbed onto hers instead. W. Who are you? The man's voice was almost a whisper, but the grip around her wrist was firm. Shooting the man a look, Ariel gloomily said, Who am I? I'm your savior. If you're not going to let go of me anytime soon, I'm going to have to build you a gravestone. In memory of Nameless. Does that sound good? The man only furrowed his brows in silence. Then, his eyes drifted toward the crushed herbs in her hands. What's the matter? Take it off. I'll help you. With that said, Ariel's hand reached toward him again. I'll do it myself. With a look of disdain, the man pushed her hands away and took off his shirt himself. The entire time, his dark eyes watched her warily. Once his shirt was off, Ariel saw the man's eight packs and the V-cut abs that ran down his body and into his pants. This man's figure is a little too great, isn't it? Unable to help herself, Ariel gulped. Blushing, she then carefully placed the crushed herbs on the man's body. What is this? the man asked. His voice was low, and she could not hear any emotions in them. Antiseptic herbs for stopping the bleeding. Where am I? In the beginning, Ariel was a little shy to be around him. However, upon hearing his constant stream of questions, she raised her head to look at him impatiently. He's handsome, but he has too many questions. If I know where I am, I wouldn't need to be trapped in this place for seven days, would I? If you have questions, you can ask your teacher instead. Why don't you save your strength and lie down to rest instead of speaking? Irritated, the man muttered, this isn't how a doctor should talk to her patient. Excuse me? Ariel deadpanned, is this the way you should be talking to your savior? At that, the man furrowed his brows. Woman, you're rude. Dude, you're impolite. The two then glared at each other as the tension in the atmosphere rose. In the end, Ariel was the one to give up. She saw no point in settling the score with an injured man, so she stood up and said, The rain is quite heavy, so it'll be much colder at night. I'm going to start the fire again. Stay right there. As Ariel walked toward the corner, the man spoke again. Hey, what is the matter with you again? Ariel spun around. If I don't start this fire now, we're both going to freeze to death tonight. The man's mouth opened, but he ended up saying, nothing. Rolling her eyes, Ariel returned to her fire starting. There was only one way to start a fire on the humid island, drilling the wood. Ariel took over an hour to finally get a tiny flame going. 
however, the wind outside blew in and ended its short life. Hey, the man said again. What? Ariel shrieked. The moment she spun around, she heard the sound of something metallic dropping onto the ground. Then, she spotted the lighter by her feet. Huh? Oh. After a three-second silence, Ariel cursed out loud, Aren't you a despicable man? You be asterisk starred. The man slowly closed his eyes and turned away, but there was a small smile growing on his lips. Night soon arrived. The two rested on the two sides of the caves. In the middle of the night, Ariel woke from grunting sounds. Opening her eyes, she realized the man's pale face was completely white. He curled into himself, cold sweat beaded all over his forehead. Hey, jerk. Are you okay? Ariel walked over to poke his arm, but the man did not even react to it. Hastily, she reached out to put her hand on his temple, only to find it scorching. His wound must be infected, that's why he's having a fever. Two amoxicillin would have done the trick, but where would she find amoxicillin on the uninhabited island? Left without any options, Ariel resorted to other methods to cool him down, by taking off his clothes. However, although that lowered the man's temperature, he began shivering and mumbling about how cold it was. Hence, Ariel moved him closer to the fire, but his condition did not improve. Damn it, Ariel cursed before taking off her clothes. She then lay down and hugged the man to share her body heat with the man. Who cares if he's a jerk? It's more important to save his life first. Saving someone is a good deed. Maybe God will let me survive my way back to find out the truth with the Southalls. If the ones who came to bring me home tried to take my life, it means that there's something wrong with the Southalls. I'll be merciless if I find out that my father is the one who did this. Ariel lost herself in her thoughts as she hugged the man. Soon, she fell asleep. When she woke again, she heard voices and footsteps outside the cave. There are other people around? Shocked, she sat up to realize that the man's jacket was on her, but the man himself was gone. Hurriedly putting on her clothes, she then warily walked out of the cave. If these are the ones who tried to kill me. How professional of them. However, when Ariel reached the cave entrance, she realized there was a line of bodyguards clothed in black. A distance away was a helicopter, and the leader of the bodyguards was speaking to the man she saved. Right then, the man turned around. It was the first time Ariel had seen the man's face with proper lighting. He was still handsome, and he was quite intimidating just by standing there. Other than his pallor, he looked like any other individual. He's quick to recover. You. Just as Ariel started speaking, the man interrupted, What do you want? What? His question threw her off. Expressionless, he explained, You saved me, so I'll fulfill a wish of yours. Ariel was rendered speechless for a moment. How rude can you be? I saved you, but you don't even have a word of thanks? Right as those words left Ariel's lips, the bodyguards all stared at her, aghast. It was as though she had said something strange. On the other hand, the man's expression remained neutral. You'll regret it if you miss this chance. Ariel was fuming, but she thought, my wooden boat might not last until I reach the land. Gritting her teeth, she squeezed out, bring me home. Now, it was the man's turn to look astounded. That's all? What else? She only had one wish, which was to leave the godforsaken uninhabited island. Glancing at her as if she was an idiot, the man then headed toward the helicopter. Three hours later, the helicopter was hovering in Jadeboro's skies. Is that the place? the man asked, pointing at the manor below. I think so. Ariel barely had any memories of her childhood, but she had investigated the Southalls before returning to the country. Chapter 2 I Am Your Father At the Southall Residence The entire place was set up for a birthday party. Shondai Southall, who was wearing the latest season's dress from LV, was surrounded by socialites, buttering her up. Shondai, your dress is beautiful. It's like a Milky Way. This is the dress from LV's spring edition, isn't it? I couldn't even rent it, but you actually managed to buy it. 
Your dad is so nice to you. Happy birthday, Shondai. I heard Sam Slight has offered you a role. You're definitely going to be the most popular actress of the year. Don't forget about us when you become famous. Who cares about the entertainment industry? Shani's just there for fun. Who is she? She's Shondai Moore. It's so easy for her to be famous. Concealing the glee in her eyes, Shondai uttered, Thank you very much. Let me go and check when the cake's coming. When Shondai returned to the mansion, she nearly collided with her mother, who was heading toward the outside. Mom. Lowering her voice, she whispered to Cindy Moore. Has my cousin's man returned yet? It's my twentieth birthday today. I don't want others to find out that our family has a girl who was kidnapped by human traffickers. Lovingly tidying the edge of Shandy's skirt, Cindy murmured, No news is good news. Don't worry. She won't be able to come back. Even if she does, the traffickers had sold her to some faraway village. What can a country bumpkin like her do? Shandai nodded in agreement. In fact, a part of her hoped that the country bumpkin would be able to return. That way, she would be able to relish the fact that she was the true daughter of a wealthy family. Bad news, Mrs. Southall, the housekeeper, cried out as she rushed in. A night's hire helicopter landed on the lawn outside. The night's hires? Shandy's eyes lit up. Mom, say, do you think Dad invited Vincent in Knight's hire? Cindy was surprised as well. Although the Southalls were running one of the top businesses in the country, and they were one of the prominent families in Jadeboro, the Knight's hires were one of the top families in the world. Vincent Knight's hire was the heir of the Knight's hire group, and the Southalls still did not have the capability of inviting Vincent to their daughter's birthday party. Maybe Vincent thinks that the business deal with our family is important? Let's have a look. Cindy was perplexed, but it was a pleasant surprise for her. If our family gets to build a relationship with the Knights hires, we won't need to worry about anything anymore. After the mother and daughter touched up their makeups, they then excitedly rushed toward the lawn. By then, a group of nouveau riche had already gathered on the lawn. The moment Shandai walked over, the socialites crowded around her with jealous looks. Shani, you actually invited the Knights hires. You're amazing. How could you not have told me something as important as this? I should have hired a professional makeup artist to put on my makeup today. Shondai smiled, but in her mind, she scoffed. The night's hires are here for me. Why would you need to put on any makeup? I must have caught Vincent's interest in the ceremony held by the night's hires last month. I'm going to be Mrs. Night's hire soon. Right then, the helicopter door slowly opened. As everyone watched in anticipation, a young woman in ragged clothes jumped down from the vehicle. She was a slender young woman whose face was coated with dirt and dust. No one could see how she originally looked like. Even her hair was in a tangled mess as if she had not washed her head for an entire month. What? Everyone then turned to look at Shandai. Those who did not like her began mocking, Shani, is this your esteemed guest? A beggar? Livid, Shandai stormed over and questioned, Who are you? Who do you think you are to join my birthday party? Birthday party? Instantly, Ariel realized who the arrogant girl was. It was known to others that she was Cindy's adopted daughter, but the detective had told her that Shandai was actually Cindy and Henrik's illegitimate child. He doesn't even know whether his real daughter is dead or alive, but he's holding a birthday party for his illegitimate daughter. Ha! Huh. Who am I? Ariel stared at the girl. I am your father. You. Right as Shandai was about to lose her temper, Ariel belatedly added, Your father's real daughter. Shandai froze, and the others around them instantly looked interested to watch the scene unfold. When Shandai came back to her senses, she stammered, Why you're Ariel Moore? That country bumpkin? She's really a country bumpkin, huh? Fortunately, Cindy was smarter than her daughter, for she hurried forward. Ariel, is that you? I've been waiting for you for so long. My poor child, you're finally back. Ariel's lips curled. Hello, Aunt Cindy, it's been a while. 
Despite the smile on her lips, her tone was sarcastic. My mother's younger sister married my father? My father married my aunt? What nonsense is this? Something must be up. The guests began whispering to each other. I heard that Mrs. Southall used to be the previous Mrs. Southall's sister. This must be Ms. Moore, who was kidnapped by human traffickers, ten years ago. The Southalls used to be Moores, Henrik Southall actually married into the Moore family. Once Maureen Moore died, the Moores all took on the family name Southall, instead. That actually happened? Seriously. Upon hearing their chatters, embarrassment flooded Cindy's mind. She cleared her throat and muttered, Darling, as long as you're back. I'll bring you to wash up. Look at you, you're so, dirty. You must have had a difficult life in the countryside. She's still reminding others that I came from the countryside. It seems like she really hates me. Right as Ariel was about to speak, a low voice sounded out behind her. Hey, everyone immediately turned to the owner of the voice. Once they saw the person coming down from the helicopter, they stiffened. It was Vinson. It was Vinson, whose every move dictated the global economy. Mr. Knight's hire? Shondai excitedly darted forward to welcome him. A are you here to join my birthday party? Thank you. Shondai could not conceal the joy in her eyes, and the blue sh on her face was for all to see. At the start, she thought Vincent had only sent someone to send her birthday greetings, but it turned out Vincent himself came. The time for my spring, the time for my happy life, has come. If she could, she would have jumped in joy. Those around her were casting envious looks at her. Although she was just an adopted daughter, she seemed to have gotten Vincent's attention. She had nothing but good days ahead of her, yet, in the next second. Who are you? Vincent's brows knitted as if he had just noticed Shondai. The impatience and confusion in his eyes were visible to everyone. Vincent did not know the woman in front of him. PFT, some of the guests, could not hold back their laughter. I thought Mr. Knight's hire was here to wish Sean Dye a happy birthday, but it turns out he doesn't even know who she is. Ha ha ha. This is hilarious. If I were her, I'd bury my whole body in the sands and never come back out. At that moment, Shandy's expression changed from delight to shock, then to embarrassment. In the end, she glared at the two laughing socialites. At the end of the day, Cindy was the quickest to recover. She stepped forward and said, Mr. Knight's hire, we didn't know you'd be coming today. What an honor for us to have you come. It's my daughter's birthday today, so she thought you were here to wish her a happy birthday. It seems like you're here to discuss the business collaboration with Rick. He's upstairs, so please come in. The mocking gazes from the guests instantly disappeared. It was also an honor to have Vincent go to his business partner's place to discuss a deal. Yet, once again, in the next second. Do I know you? Cindy's gesture of invitation froze midair. Mr. Knight's hire, doesn't know me? Once again, the guests were trying to hold themselves back from laughing. Is the mother and daughter duo here, for comedic purposes? Cindy was internally cringing from the awkwardness. If Vincent doesn't know me, then who's he here for? All of a sudden, she recalled that the Ariel Moore that everyone looked down on had come out of Vincent's helicopter. Ariel's appearance had been too sudden and shocking, as she was in such a disheveled state. For a long moment, she simply could not think that Vincent and Ariel might be connected. Does Ariel know Vincent? Chapter 3 Wait for her to make a fool of herself. Vincent pressed his voice and said, Are you sure that's your wish? I'll give you another chance. Ariel knitted her brows and looked at him. You want to grant me another wish? Do you think you're the magical genie? Everyone, including Shondai and Cindy, looked at Vincent and Ariel in disbelief. What's going on? Does this beggar know Vincent? Vincent gazed into her eyes. When he was about to respond to her question, Henrik interrupted. Nice to see you, Mr. Knight's hire. Why didn't you tell me you're coming? All the guests' jaws dropped when Henrik greeted Vincent. Cindy instantly closed her eyes as she dared not imagine what would happen next. 
what on earth is happening? Henrik finally noticed something was amiss and started looking around. A sudden frown warped his face the moment he saw Ariel. Henrik turned to Shandai and said, Why did you invite a beggar to our birthday party? Get her out of here. Shandai froze for a moment even though deep in her heart she was pleased with his reaction. Dad, she's, dad. Ariel interrupted. Don't you remember me? I'm Sani. Sani was Ariel's nickname. San, Henrik raised his brows and widened his eyes in shock. You're Ariel? Yes, dad. I'm Ariel, she walked up to him. Ariel did not remember anything that had happened a decade ago, but she remembered that familiar face. Upon hearing that, Henrik staggered. Fear was written all over his face as he was afraid that his secret would be exposed. Ariel knew what was going through his mind. In a steady voice, she continued, We have not met for years. I miss you so much. Henrik was at a loss for words. He had no choice but to give her a pat on the shoulder. Welcome back, honey, but, what happened to you and Mr. Knight's hire? Why do the both of you look so messy? All the guests then started paying attention to Vincent's clothes. They were so drawn to the man himself that they did not notice how wet his clothes were. Shandai cast a puzzled look at Ariel and Vinson. Is there something going on between these two? But she somehow dismissed her suspicion. Vinson falling in love with this country bumpkin? No way. Unless he's blind. Upon seeing how awkward the atmosphere had become, Cindy stepped in and said, I think it was Mr. Knight's hire who brought Ariel home. Really? Henrik seemed to be a little less disgusted by Ariel after hearing that. Since she was still young and doesn't remember a thing from her childhood, I guess she doesn't exactly know what happened. Imagine the benefits we can reap if we could use her to get closer to the night's hires. Henrik instantly plastered a smile to his face and looked at Vincent. So you're Ariel's friend? Thanks for bringing her back to us. If you don't mind, would you like to stay back, clean up a little, and dine with us? Cindy added, oh, yes. We have extra pairs of clothes for our guests. Vincent initially wanted to turn down their offer, but he could not stand wearing that sea-soaked clothes anymore. Since Vincent did not reject his officer, Henrik extended his hand and showed him the direction to the guest room. He then whispered in Cindy's ear, clean Ariel up too. Cindy and Henrik had been married for nearly a decade, so she understood what he wanted her to do. It was clear that Henrik wanted to use Ariel to get in the Nightshire's good books. Damn it, why is luck on Ariel's and not my daughter's side? Maureen had been oppressing Cindy when she was still alive. I'll never allow her daughter to step all over mine. Cindy nodded and played along. She then pulled Shandai aside and said, bring her to the bathroom. She's your older sister now, so be nice to her. Shandai was able to read between the lines. She turned around and put on a smile. Hey, Ariel. Let's go to the bathroom, shall we? Ariel did not believe that the mother-daughter duo would accept her into the family. Yet, she hid her suspicion and responded with a grin. Okay. They held hands and walked into the mansion. Meanwhile, other guests continued to exchange whispers as they tried to figure out what Vincent was doing here. No matter what the reason was, it was clear that from now on, they would have to show more respect to the Southalls. At the guest room upstairs, Shandai said, You can stay here temporarily while we tidy up your room, and you can also find all the toiletries here. I'll bring you a dress. All right. Thank you, Ariel responded. Oh, before I forget, Shandai turned around and asked, Do you know how to use the water heater? We fixed the temperature so you don't have to adjust it anymore, she reminded kindly, but somehow forgot to hide the disdain in her eyes. Ariel seemingly did not notice her expression. She responded with a gentle smile. Thanks. Does she really think I don't know how to use the water heater? Great. I'll bring your dress over. Sandy smiled and walked out of the room. After closing the door, the smile on her face disappeared almost instantly. She took out a handkerchief and cleaned her hands thoroughly before throwing it on the floor. Her hand stinks, and her body stinks. 
everything about her stinks. Vincent must have brought her here, by accident. I'm sure he wouldn't like a filthy woman like Ariel. Meanwhile, Ariel was taking her own sweet time enjoying a nice warm bath in the bathroom. Even she felt disgusted by how she looked and smelled after spending a week on the island. As the warm water streamed down from her head to toes, she wiped off all the dirt on her face, revealing her fair complexion. Her delicate face, with fine features, made her look like a dainty little fairy. About ten minutes later, Shondai knocked on the door. Ariel, can you please open the door? I want to pass you the dress. I've also placed a pair of heels near the door, you can wear them later. All right. Ariel opened the door slightly to retrieve the dress. Once again, she did not see the disgust and mockery on Shandy's face. The dress Shandai gave to Ariel was a couture dress by Gucci. It was more costly than the dress she was wearing now, though it took her some effort to get her hands on the dress, she could not wear it as it had a specific cut. Its wearer must be slim and possess a supermodel-like physique. At the same time, the person needed to have a busty, curvaceous figure to be able to fit in the dress. Without an hourglass figure, any ordinary woman would look plump in it. Since Shondai had broad shoulders but no collarbones, the dress would look unflattering on her. This was why she did not wear it for tonight's party. Once that hideous woman comes out with that dress. Chapter 4 Disgusting there isn't any exquisite dress she could wear to hide the fact that she was just a foolish country bumpkin. At the same time, Shondai was not afraid that Henrik would blame her for turning Ariel into a laughing stock. After all, she had given Ariel her most expensive dress. She only has herself to blame for not being able to fit into that dress. On top of that, the heels Shondai prepared for Ariel were also four inches high. I bet this country bumpkin had never worn any heels in her life, she might slip and fall in those stilettos when she walks downstairs later. Ha! Huh. Shondai was so proud of her wit that she almost wanted to applaud herself. She could not wait to see all the guests' reactions when they saw her in that dress. I want everyone to know that this country bumpkin doesn't deserve to be my sister. Hey, Ariel. I'll be downstairs, okay? Shondai said, dinner's about to start. Come down once you're ready. Okay, Ariel replied from the room. Upon hearing her response, Shondai turned around and left. Let's get the party started so that all the guests, especially Vincent, will have a chance to see how hideous she is. Shondai hummed a cheerful tune as she made her way downstairs. She seemed to have forgotten how Vincent had embarrassed her earlier. It's okay. People will forget about it soon. The only thing they'll remember is how ridiculous Ariel looks. Back in the room, Ariel altered the dress a little so that it would fit her nicely. Knowing that Shondai would embarrass her by giving her an ill-fitting dress, she found a sewing kit in the living hall and brought it into the room. After putting it on and seeing how she looked in the mirror, she was pleased with the results. The couture dress looked great on her tall and slender body and her collarbones became even more apparent after spending a week on the island. It fit her like a glove as if it was tailor-made. Since when is Shondai this kind-hearted? Is she not as evil as I thought she was? Ariel decided to trust her initial gut instinct. She removed the dress and examined it carefully once again. After a five-minute inspection, she did not find anything fishy about the dress. Hmm. That's strange. Ariel put it on, looked into the mirror, and studied the cut of the dress closely. She soon realized how challenging it was for someone to look great in this dress. The wearer must not only be tall and slender, but must also have a nice bust size to accentuate the specific cut of the dress. Any woman with thick arms and large shoulders would not look graceful in it, but if the wearer fulfilled all the criteria, she would look glorious in that dress. A corner of Ariel's mouth quirked up. So that has been Shandy's intention all along, huh? Too bad. I exercise regularly and have an ideal body shape that will look amazing in the dress. I can't wait to see the disappointment on her face later. Initially, Ariel wanted to lay low as she did not want to become the center of attention of someone else's birthday party. 
but what Shandai did made her realize she had no choice but to do something to stir up a hornet's nest in this family. Once the seemingly peaceful family became chaotic, Ariel believed the truth would eventually surface. After putting on the silver heels Shandai had prepared for her, she stepped out of the room. The heels were so high that had she lost focus, she would fall. Shandai decided to start the party early. She turned on all the lamps in the hall that had been extravagantly decorated. All the guests held a glass of champagne in their hands while they listened to Shandy's speech. Vincent, who had done sprucing himself up, stood among the crowd too. He was neither interested in the birthday party nor the pretentious socialites around him. He only stayed back to bid Ariel, his savior, farewell. Though he thought the girl he rescued was crude and unsophisticated, it was the right thing to do. Shandai got up the stage and took a glance at Vincent. Upon realizing he was still around, she believed he had stayed for her. Someone as esteemed as him must be too embarrassed to admit that he's interested in me. That's why he pretended he didn't know me. Oh well, I guess all powerful men are like that. She decided to take the initiative to express her interest in Vincent. She walked up to the mic and tried to make eye contact with Vincent. Good evening, Mr. Knight's hire, welcome to my birthday party. I'm so pleased to see you here. A crease appeared between Vincent's brows when he heard that. Who on earth is this ridiculous woman? Why does she act as if I know her very well? And where is that girl? Why hasn't she come down yet? A big part of Shandy's speech revolved around Vincent. It was as if she was trying hard to remind her other guests of his presence here. At this point, a housekeeper walked up to her and whispered, Ms. Moore is coming down now. Great. Turn on all the lights near the stairs. I want everyone to turn their attention to the clown. Yes, miss. The housekeeper replied. The stairs were lit up all of a sudden. Anyone who stood there would have been thrust into the limelight. Can't wait for the clown to take center stage. Ladies and gentlemen, today is indeed a meaningful day for our family as my sister from the same father is finally home. With enthusiasm, Shandai spoke into the mic once again. Human traffickers kidnapped her ten years ago, and today, she finally returned from the village. I'm truly glad. Before Shandai could finish her sentence, all the guests turned their heads around and when they heard footsteps coming down from the stairs, Shandy's face looked distorted as she tried to suppress her sarcastic smile. She raised her hand and pointed at the stairs. Let us put our hands together to welcome my sister. All the guests did not know what was going on but played along by clapping their hands reluctantly. Why should we clap our hands to welcome a girl from the village? They only did what she told them to because they had to show the Southall family some respect since they were one of the prominent families in Jade Burrow. Otherwise, they would not even bother to look at a disheveled beggar. Upon hearing how Shandai introduced her, Ariel raised her brows and smirked. She can't wait for me to make a fool of myself, can she? Chapter 5 A Stunning Beauty Ariel lowered her head to hide her emotions, lifted up the dress, and walked down the stairs. The guests first noticed a pair of slender legs clad in Jimmy Choo. The light that hit on her further accentuated her dainty toes and silken ankles. Just the sight of Ariel's legs had fueled the guests' imagination. Shandai, too, was taken aback by how perfect her legs were. She took a sidelong glance at some of the male guests and saw that they were all swooning over her. She also noticed Vincent could not keep his eyes away from her legs. Shandai began to panic and began to wonder if she had made the wrong move. But soon, she managed to regain her composure. It's just a pair of legs, anyway. They'll probably throw up right away after seeing her face. By the time Shandai turned her attention back to the stairs, Ariel was already walking down to the hall. Go on. Walk faster. I can't wait for you to fall in those crazy heels. It'll definitely be quite a scene. To Shandy's surprise, Ariel did not wobble at all. Instead, she was able to come down from the stairs in steady steps. It was impossible for Ariel to fall because every step she made was so steady. Disappointment was written all over Shandy's face. 
how did she do manage to walk in those heels? Shandai did not know Ariel had had the experience of wearing a pair of six-inch heels when she stood in for a friend in a fashion show. To Ariel, these four-inch heels were just a piece of cake. I remember how some drama series depicted villagers walking on those ridiculous stilts during celebrations. Is that how Ariel learned to walk in heels? At this point, Shandai could already see Ariel's slender waist as the latter continued to walk down the stairs. How is this possible? She didn't look like this when she came down from the helicopter in her dirty and baggy clothes earlier. Shandai was utterly jealous. Fine. She might be skinny, but I bet she's an ugly bee asterisk tch. Once again, Shandai convinced herself that Ariel would eventually shock everyone with her unsightly appearance. Come on. Speed up. Just as she wished, Ariel picked up her pace. After seeing her slender lower torso, Shandy's eyes were then drawn to her well-defined collarbones and neck. Shandy's fear continued to grow, and without her realizing it, she was already clenching her fists. The light finally shone on Ariel's face, revealing her well-defined and delicate features. Never in Shandy's life had she come across such a perfect face. Her dark and sparkly eyes were exceptionally stunning, and they shone like a pair of exquisite diamonds. No words could describe Ariel's flawless beauty. Shandy's jaw dropped, and she could not believe her eyes. That's, that's Ariel? Is that really her? Are you kidding me? The color instantly drained out of Shandy's pale face. At the same time, a vortex of anger swirled inside her. Did I just give her a dress that flatters and made her shine like a star? Oh my god, what have I done? Shandai was overwhelmed by all kinds of emotions. She felt she was about to burst from rage. Her pallid face was now flushed with jealousy and hatred. She did not even want to take another glance at Ariel as it would only make her feel bad about her looks. Shandai observed the guests and noticed all of them were spellbound by Ariel's beauty. Vincent, who had all this while been carrying a deadpan expression on his face, began to look at Ariel differently. Is that awestruck in his eyes? Is an esteemed noble like Vincent Knight's higher, struck in awe over Ariel Moore's beauty? Ariel's beauty had also dazed Cindy. She was aware that her sister, Maureen, was a stunning beauty but was still surprised to see how gorgeous her daughter was despite growing up in the countryside. In fact, Ariel looked even prettier than her mother. Damn it. She'll steal Shandy's thunder, for sure. Cindy immediately looked at Henrik. Henrik was just as flabbergasted. Of course, he did not react like how the other gentlemen did. He was Ariel's father, after all, but it was undeniable that there were sparkles in Henrik's eyes. This old man must have thought he has found a long-lost gem. No way. I'll not allow Ariel to enjoy the privileges we have in this family. I have underestimated this girl. I have to get rid of her. I must get rid of her. Ariel took a quick look at Shandai and realized this beloved sister of hers was so shocked that her face was all crumpled up. She'll probably come to me and throw a punch at my face if there aren't guests around. That's what jealousy does to girls. Ariel pretended she did not understand Shandy's expression and walked up to her with a smile. Happy birthday, Shandai. Why do you look so unhappy? What's wrong? Shandai was disgusted by Ariel's silvery voice. To her, Ariel sounded just like the friction between a saw blade and a chalkboard. Shandai tried her best to hide her emotions and plastered a smile on her face. I'm fine. I'm glad to hear that, Shandai. Ariel grinned. Oh, take a look at this dress you've lent me. It's a great fit. She intentionally emphasized the words great fit. Rage throbbed in Shandai like a heartbeat, and she was on the verge of losing her cool. She's doing this on purpose. You, Shandai opened her mouth, but fainted before she could finish her sentence. Oh, no, Shandai. Ariel did not expect Shandai to faint. She tried to grab her arms, but it was too late. Chapter 6 Marry Me Her hair accessories were all out of place and her hair was disheveled. 
The woman, who was supposed to be in the spotlight, turned pale and was in a pathetic state. Shani! Cindy exclaimed as she rushed on stage. Even though she was extremely worried, Cindy did not forget about Ariel and used her shoulder to nudge Ariel aside. Ariel was wearing heels that were four inches high and was standing on the edge of the makeshift stage. The force of Cindy's push sent Ariel tumbling sideways as she lost her balance and was about to fall off the stage. However, she reacted swiftly and protected her head with her hands. That way, even if she had fallen down, it would lessen her chances of having a concussion. However, to Ariel's surprise, she did not land on the ground. Instead, she felt a strong hand supporting her back steadily while another hand was wrapped around her waist as she was being carried off stage. After Ariel stood firmly on the ground, she instinctively turned to look at the person who had saved her. What greeted her was a cold and perfectly sculpted face. Frowning, the man said, Why are you wearing such high heels? Are you planning to fall to your death? I didn't have a choice. Ariel wanted to retort but controlled her mouth. After all, that man was just concerned about her safety. If not for him, she might have already been badly injured from the fall. Ariel swallowed her words and was about to thank him when Henrik rushed over. My darling daughter, are you hurt? Dad was going to help you just now, but Mr. Knight's hire was a step ahead of me. Mr. Knight's hire seems to treat you really well. Henrik said meaningfully with a concerned expression. On the other hand, Henrik did not even look at Sean Dye, who was being carried upstairs. That was interesting to Ariel. Regarding her dad, she had almost believed that he was a loving dad who doted on his daughter. What Ariel could not understand was, why would her mother, who seemed so perfect on paper, choose to marry a man like Henrik? Since she was back, she was determined to find out the reason as she suspected there was more to that than meets the eye. There had to be a secret that she did not know. I'm fine, Dad. You should go upstairs and take a look at Shandai. I'm not sure what was going on, but she suddenly fainted just now. Hopefully, it isn't anything serious that we should be concerned about. Ariel's expression was soft and serene as she spoke, without a hint of the disgust she felt towards Henrik. She behaved exactly like a sensible and obedient daughter, which Henrik was extremely satisfied with. The man could even be convinced that he must have saved the universe in his past life to have such a perfect daughter. Henrik quickly replied, You're right. I'll go and take a look at Shandai right away and shan't disturb you and Mr. Knight's hire. Mr. Knight's hire, please make yourself at home. A crease appeared between Vincent's brows when he heard that. Make myself at home? Do the Southalls really think that we are on the same level? The man took a glance at Henrik, but decided to spare him the ridicule. After Henrik left, Vincent said, I'm not here to attend the function. I only waited until now to make sure that there are really no wishes you want me to fulfill for you. Are there? Ariel was feeling somewhat helpless. The truth was that before she returned to the country, she had only gathered detailed information on the Southalls and knew nothing about the economic situation in the country. However, the Nyshire family had such a powerful influence in the country that one would have heard of them even without research. Besides, from the guests and Henrik's reactions, it was apparent that Vincent was definitely a big shot in the country. However, Ariel had only performed the duties expected of a medical personnel on the island and nothing more except for the fact that they had slept together, but the woman would rather believe that nothing of that sort had happened. In a determined manner, Ariel replied, Vinson, I appreciate your kind offer, but there's really no need for that. If there was really something she wanted, she was fully capable of getting it herself. The woman had never depended on anyone else. The crease between Vinson's brows deepened when he heard Ariel's words. Woman, do you know what you have just turned down? Vincent did not believe that there was anyone who would reject such an offer from him, any wish that he would grant. As such, it did not make sense to him that Ariel kept rejecting him. Vincent wished he could check if there was something wrong with that woman's brain. Looking at how serious Vincent was with regards to granting her that wish, for some unknown reason, Ariel couldn't help but feel amused by it. 
She shrugged and replied, Maybe you could enlighten me on what I have just turned down. Was it my Mr. Wright? Oh, also, my name is not woman. Dot. What's your name then? My name is Sani. Sani was Ariel's nickname, given to her by her overseas adopted parents. Got it. You still haven't told me what your wish is. Seeing how insistent the man was, Ariel joked, If you really want to repay me, why don't you, marry me? Vincent was speechless after hearing Ariel's wish and had a complicated expression on his face. Seeing how tense the atmosphere had become, Ariel cleared her throat and tried to ease the tension. I was just joking. Anyway, just forget it. There's really nothing I need. I can do that, Vincent suddenly spoke. What? Ariel was stunned and asked in disbelief, what can you do? Vincent regained his composure and with his usual cold expression, he replied, I can grant you your wish, but I have to discuss it with my family first as it does not concern me alone. Hold on, Ariel widened her eyes in shock and was at a loss for words. You didn't take my words seriously, right? I've already said that I was just joking. Well, sometimes people disguise their true thoughts as jokes. But I really meant it as a joke. I'm not interested in you at all. Vincent looked lost for a moment before he replied, Why? Every girl in Jade Burrow dreams of marrying me. But that doesn't include me. Anyway, I'll be giving you my answer later on. I'll get going first. Vincent left after he finished speaking, obviously not trusting that the woman was really just joking. After Vincent left, his bodyguards, who were waiting at one corner, followed behind him. Hey! Stop right there, we haven't finished talking yet. Ariel shouted behind Vincent as she chased after him. However, she was blocked by the man's bodyguards. Sorry, miss, you can't go there. But I've something important to tell him. However, the bodyguards did not allow her to pass. Apparently, without Vincent's permission, no one was allowed to get near him. That was also the reason no one dared to approach Vincent, including the socialites who admired him and other men who want to make use of him to climb up the social ladder. As such, Ariel had no choice but could only watch as Vincent left in his helicopter, feeling frustrated that the man seemed to have taken her joking statement seriously. However, her worries dissipated soon after. After all, no one in their right minds would take that seriously, repay someone by marrying her? Such ridiculous practices are non-existent in the modern era. It's just not possible that anyone would really consider that proposal seriously. That guy must be just joking with me. I almost fell for it as he looked so serious. I guess that's just his unique style. Ariel pouted at that thought, quite certain that she had been tricked by Vincent. As such, she was no longer fretting over how she should explain to the man. Chapter 7 Unable to Forget Her While Ariel was deep in thought, a few socialites approached her in a friendly manner. Ms. Moore, you look like a really nice person. Shall we be friends? Ms. Moore, you have such a good figure. Do you mind sharing some tips to keep fit? We should exchange contacts. Since you're now back to Jade Burrow, we should keep in touch more often. Those women appeared to look really friendly and seemed to be truly interested in befriending Ariel. However, Ariel could easily see through their real intentions. However, she pretended to be ignorant and nodded with an innocent expression. Sure. I would love to make some friends here. While the socialites gathered around Ariel and chatting with her enthusiastically, Shandai, who was upstairs, finally woke up. She saw Cindy who was holding her hand tightly, with a worried expression, while Henrik looked distracted as if he was not concerned about her at all. Shandy's resentment festered at once. It's all because of that B asterisk TCH, Ariel, that my dad doesn't love me anymore. Feeling aggrieved and frustrated, tears streamed down the woman's face. Mom. Darling, you've finally woken up. Don't cry, don't cry, Cindy comforted her daughter and could feel her heart aching. After seeing that Shondai was fine, Henrik told the two women that he was going to head back downstairs. There are still a lot of guests downstairs. 
I'll go and entertain them first, the man said. Before the mother-daughter pair could reply, Henrik had already turned around and left. After the door was shut, Shondai could no longer contain her frustration and threw a pillow against the door. Mom. Just look at Dad. I can't stand it anymore. I want Ariel to disappear right away. Cindy was also burning with anger. It was supposed to be her darling daughter's birthday party. However, Ariel had stolen all the attention instead. Cindy took a deep inhale to calm herself down and tried to comfort her daughter instead, darling, let's not rush at first. If something bad happens to her right after she returned to the country, your dad would definitely suspect us. As you know, your dad is really chauvinistic and hates it when people don't listen to him. So, you have to be patient and don't act rashly, yeah. So what should we do now? Shondai covered her face with her hands and started bawling her eyes out. My birthday party is ruined. Everyone will start making fun of me. Those women's favorite activity is gossiping behind other people's backs. Just when Cindy was about to reply, Janet knocked and entered the room. Holding an envelope in her hand, the nanny exclaimed in delight, I have great news. Mrs. Southall, Ms. Shondai, there's another joyous occasion to celebrate. Shondai was not interested in knowing what it was at all and looked away. There's absolutely nothing to celebrate, everything is so screwed up. Today is the worst day ever in my entire life, not to mention that Ariel was the center of attention throughout the party, and Shondai had even fainted in front of everyone. Who knew what those socialites would gossip about? Meanwhile, Cindy remained composed and asked Janet, What's the good news about? What's that in your hands? Janet walked towards them excitedly and explained, I have just received a document for Ms. Shondai. It has the emblem of the Crown Coffee Academy on it. Really? Cindy immediately took over the envelope from the nanny. After opening the envelope and looking at its contents, she tugged on Shandy's hand excitedly and exclaimed, Shani, it's really good news. You've come in first in the socialite coffee competition. The socialite coffee competition was a competition organized by the top baristas around the world. The winner of the competition would become the ambassador of Swar Coffee, which belonged to the Knights Hire Group. To be able to take part in the competition was already not easy. Cindy was over the moon that her daughter had emerged as the winner of the competition. To her, it was indeed a great honor. Sharing her mother's excitement, Shondai had also looked through the document a few times. Apart from the usual congratulatory words, it was also stated on the document that she had to attend the awards ceremony held at the International Hotel at Naram the following week. According to tradition, Vincent would also be at the awards ceremony to personally announce the new ambassador of Swar Coffee, as well as to give out the awards. Shondai suddenly felt energized at that thought. Cindy was smiling from ear to ear as she said, I'm sure you've made an impression on Mr. Knight's hire at the birthday party. When you turn up at the awards ceremony, I'm sure he will be surprised and see you in a different light. Shondai clenched the paper tightly and replied in excitement, Exactly. Mr. Knight's hire will definitely remember me well. After I officially become the ambassador, those gossipy socialites will naturally have to shut their mouths. Not only could she become the center of attention again, but Shondai was also hoping that she would leave an unforgettable impression on Vincent. It's a joyous occasion worthy of celebration indeed, Cindy removed the jade bangle on her wrist and gave it to Janet while saying, this is your reward for bringing us such great news. However, Janet refused the gift instinctively. Mrs. Southall, I can't take this. All I did was receive the document. This bangle must be worth at least a few hundred thousand? Cindy forced the bangle back into the nanny's hands and said, Well, this is worth way more than a few hundred thousand. Just take it to any random shop and they will quote a price of at least a million. Of course, other than this being your reward, I'll need your help in something else as well. A hint of greed flashed across Janet's eyes. Tempted by the offer, she kept the bangle and asked, What is it that I can help with? Just tell me, Mrs. Southall, I'll do my best. Help me keep an eye on Ariel and report to me whenever you notice any unusual activities on her end. 
Understood. I'll definitely keep a close watch on that hoin from the countryside. There was a trace of sorrow in Cindy's eyes when she heard the nanny's words. Is Ariel really from the countryside? Cindy could not help but wonder as there was no news from the men she had sent and they were still not back yet. Besides, the address provided by Ariel was at South Island, which was certainly not the countryside. When Ariel stated her address, Cindy did not think much about it. She thought that Ariel might have gone to work at South Island as it had been so many years after all. However, judging by the current circumstances, Cindy felt that she should investigate in detail what Ariel had been up to and where she had been to during these past ten years. It did not seem possible for a girl who grew up in the countryside to have such a classy demeanor. At that thought, Cindy could not help but remind her daughter, Shani, mom thinks that Ariel is not as simple as she seems. Before I come up with a plan, don't do anything rash, yeah? We should lie low and avoid any complications for the time being. I know, I know. Even though Shandai agreed, she did not think that her mom's concerns were warranted. Apart from inheriting her mom's good looks, she's probably just a country bumpkin. How threatening can she be? She can't possibly have also inherited her mom's intelligence? To Shandai, intelligence and talents were a result of nurture and not nature. Shandai was good at arts and had a good reputation in the socialite circle. Besides, her achievements so far were attained after spending huge amounts of money on various classes and training. As such, the woman found it ridiculous at the notion that she had to be cautious of a country bumpkin. What happened was just the result of a one-off miscalculation on her part. Mom, I have an idea. I want to invite Ariel to attend the awards ceremony with me so that she would realize that we are worlds apart and feel bad about herself. After giving it some thought, Cindy agreed that it might be a good idea. Sure. Let's ask both Ariel and your dad to go. That will make your dad see that you are the more valuable daughter between you and Ariel. The mother-daughter pair were getting excited at the thought of Ariel being utterly humiliated at the awards ceremony. Chapter 8 A Venomous Snake Shandy's mood improved greatly after knowing that she was the winner of the socialite coffee competition. After tidying up her appearance, she went downstairs with Cindy again. Once they reached downstairs, Shandai started looking all around for Vincent, but the man was nowhere to be seen. Just then, she saw another socialite whom she was on friendly terms with and asked, Did you see Mr. Knight's hire? Mr. Knight's hire has left long ago. Did he say anything before he left? Shandai pressed on. The socialite gave it some thought and replied, He kept talking to your sister. There were bodyguards around him and I couldn't hear their conversation but they did not look too happy, did not look happy? Shandy's face lit up and continued asking, what do you mean by that? I'm not sure. In the end, Mr. Knight's hire just walked away after saying something. Your sister chased after him, wanting to continue the conversation, but was stopped by his bodyguards. That means she and Mr. Knight's hire are not that close after all, Shandai analyzed. The socialite nodded and replied, Well, of course, that's the case. No matter how pretty your sister is, she's still a country bumpkin. Given the status of the Knight's higher family, how is it possible for a girl from the countryside to have any connections with them? Shani, don't be discouraged, yeah? You're definitely the only one in the whole of Jade Burrow who is good enough for Mr. Knight's higher. Happy to hear that, Shandai raised her brows and said, I like you very much. I'll tell my dad to give your family more businesses. That's wonderful. Thanks Shani. While the two women were chatting away, Shandai suddenly heard a few other socialites mocking her from a distance away. I can't believe Shandai even has the cheek to come downstairs. She even fainted after seeing how gorgeous her sister was. Exactly. If I were her, I would hide at home for at least three years and only come out when everyone forgets about the incident. Fuming, Shandai was just about to argue with that group of women before she suddenly stopped in her tracks nope. I shouldn't do that. She knew that those people were opportunists who would sway towards whichever side would benefit them. 
they were not worth her energy at all, if she argued with them it would only hurt her image as a socialite. Jade Burrow would be holding a judging session for all the socialites in the city soon and every single action of theirs would be taken into account. Currently, Shandy's priority was to deal with Ariel. As long as she got Ariel out of her way, there would be absolutely no one else who could steal her limelight. Those people would also naturally stop gossiping about her. Just then, a plan began to form in Shandy's mind. She needed to get rid of Ariel as soon as possible. She should not listen to her mom and wait any longer. Who knew what Ariel would be up to if she delayed it further? At night, after all the guests had left, the housekeepers tidied up the hall and went to bed. Ariel's room had already been prepared for her. Henrik had allocated a room with an attached balcony to her. Such treatment also showed how much Henrik valued her. Of course, Ariel was well aware that she was not what Henrik valued, but rather, the benefits that she could potentially bring to him. At the same time, Ariel also noticed that one of the housekeepers had been spying on her since the second half of the function. As such, even though Ariel had already washed up and was preparing to go to bed, she intended to continue staying alert. After all, there was a possibility that anyone in the mansion could be plotting something against her. Meanwhile, Shandai was tossing and turning restlessly while trying to think of a way to deal with Ariel. Suddenly, an idea stuck her. Janet, please come to my room for a while. Janet reached Shandy's room soon after receiving her call. Miss Shandai, how can I help you? The nanny asked once she entered the room. After receiving that bangle from Cindy that was worth a million, Janet had pledged her loyalty to the mother-daughter pair. To her. Shandai was the only heiress of the house she would serve. Did you notice any unusual behavior from that B asterisk TCH? Shandai asked. Janet shook her head and replied, after the banquet, Ms. Moore and Mr. Southall went into the study for a chat. When she came out, she was holding an ATM card. That should be her allowance given to her by Mr. Southall. She returned to her room to rest right after that. Other than asking for a glass of water, everything else seems normal. Shandai was overwhelmed with jealousy after hearing the nanny's words. Her mom was the only one who had been giving her allowance all along. She knew that Henrik was very petty by nature and was shocked that he had given Ariel an ATM card on the first day she returned. That reinforced Shandy's decision to get rid of Ariel as soon as possible. Janet, there's something I need you to get for me. Place it in her room after you get it. What is that? A venomous snake. Shandai had already thought it all out. Their manor was situated on a hilltop. Even if a snake crawled into Ariel's room in the middle of the night and bit her to death, the incident would most likely be classified as an accident. There was no way others would find out that it was her who did it. The venomous snake? You want her to die from a snake bite? Janet's hands were trembling in fear when she asked that. Even though she had actively participated in some of the mother-daughter pair's evil deeds, she had not caused anyone's death before. Is there a problem? Are you not willing to do it? No, no, I will follow your instructions. I'm absolutely loyal to you and Mrs. Southall, the nanny explained and continued, however, I remembered that Mrs. Southall had told us to stay low for the time being. Enough. I'm not listening to all those. My mom's a coward. She doesn't know that the longer we delay dealing with her, the more trouble she will bring us. The right way to do it is to strike first. If you're not willing to do it, there are others who would. However, Janet, if I'm not wrong, your youngest son is a gambling addict and in order to cover his losses, you've taken quite a few items from this house, am I right? Janet let out an incredulous gasp and looked at Shandai when she heard that. She could hardly believe that Shandai was even resorting to blackmailing at such a young age. Janet was well aware that the items which she had taken from the manor were all of high value. If she were caught, she would definitely be sentenced to jail for a long time. Just then, Shandai spoke again, but of course, Janet, since you have watched me grow up, I will not be so ruthless. As long as you do according to what I say, I will make sure no one else knows your secret. 
Besides, if you need money next time, you can just ask from me directly. So, Janet, what is your choice? Are you doing it? Janet closed her eyes slowly. Do I really have a choice? Ariel fell asleep eventually later into the night. However, she remained cautious so that she could be alerted to possible danger and wake up immediately when necessary. In the middle of her sleep, she suddenly heard noises coming from the window. Ariel awoke at once, but she remained motionless and continued laying in her bed. She could hear footsteps on her balcony. However, after a few seconds, the footsteps gradually became distant and eventually could no longer be heard. She knew that someone had been on her balcony. However, the trespasser did not enter her room and Ariel was not sure what they had done. After staying in her bed for a while more and making sure that the trespasser wasn't returning, Ariel switched on the phone given to her by Henrik and used the light from the screen to illuminate her surroundings. Indeed, the trespasser had already left. However, she wondered what they could possibly have done for just such a short while. Chapter 9 Want Her Dead Ariel decided to get up to look around. But instead of turning on the lights, she chose to rely on her phone's illumination as she searched every corner of the room. Hiss. All of a sudden, she heard something odd that sounded like someone was breathing rapidly. It took a while, but Ariel managed to pinpoint the source of the sound. It came from her bed and was only about three feet away from her. What the hell is it? Ariel hurriedly increased the brightness on her phone screen and shone it in the direction of the sound. To her horror, it was a cobra angrily hissing away. The cobra had long set its sight on Ariel as it reared itself up and stared at her with a pair of piercing green eyes. If she hadn't gotten up because the noise bothered her, Ariel would have fallen victim to the cobra's venomous bite. All of a sudden, the cobra launched itself toward Ariel, aiming for her neck. Thanks to her training, Ariel had lightning-fast reflexes and dodged the cobra's attack in the nick of time. She then swiftly caught the cobra by its tail and flung it hard against the floor, knocking it out almost immediately. Eager to cut off the head of the cobra, Ariel whipped out the scissors she had initially kept under her pillow as a precautionary measure. However, before she could deal the finishing blow, Ariel was hit by a sudden realization. The snake was indeed a cobra but it would never be found here in the north since its species lived in the south. This cobra couldn't have accidentally crawled into my room. Someone must have put it here. Ariel recalled the footsteps she had heard earlier and put two and two together. She finally understood the intention of the person who had stood briefly on her balcony before leaving. These people want me dead. The wheels in Ariel's head started turning as she thought about the possible perpetrators who could want to harm her. Henrik thought very highly of her and was confident he could rely on her to climb the ranks in the night's hires. He was only too eager to pamper her, so there was no way he could have done it. The only possibilities left were Cindy and Shandai. Then again, Cindy was a clever and collected person. It was unlikely that she'd carry out such a plan on the first night of Ariel's return. That meant that Shandai was the most likely perpetrator. Ariel's eyes narrowed at the thought of that, her gaze turning colder under the illumination of the moon. Shondai Southall, you've grossly overestimated yourself. If you want me dead, you're going to have to try a lot harder. The clock had just struck one, and the night was even darker than before. Almost everyone in the villa had fallen into a deep slumber. All except for Shondai. Shondai was wide awake and waiting to receive the news of Ariel's death. However, it had already been a few hours, yet there was still no good news for her. After waiting around for so long, Shandai could no longer stand it. She dialed Janet's number and ordered her up to her room. As soon as Janet stepped in, Shandai asked, Did you not do as per my orders? If that's the case, you can wait for the police to come to you in the morning. Janet panicked and immediately explained, You've misunderstood, Miss Shandai. I did as you instructed and bought the most venomous snake I could find. I had already set it loose in her room two hours ago. Then why haven't I heard anything? If the snake had bitten her, she'd have woken up, screaming in pain. My room is so close to hers, 
yet I haven't heard any screams, Shondai replied with brows knitted together. That. I have no idea. Could it be that the snake doesn't bite? Janet shook her head. No, the seller assured me that the snake he picked is very aggressive. He had even starved the snake for days, so it's guaranteed to attack any living body. Shondai was even more puzzled now. So, what could have happened? Janet scratched her head as she pondered. The seller also said that the snake's venom is very potent. Without treatment, the victim will surely die. Perhaps the snake had already bitten her? But before she could react, the venom had taken effect, which means she's, she's already dead. Shandai interrupted with a glint in her eye. In that case, Miss Shandai, should I find an excuse to enter her room so I can check? No need, Shandai replied with a wave of her hands. We have to keep this on the down low. You'd only incur suspicion if you were to go to her room. Besides, what if she gets sent to the hospital and they manage to revive her? I say we let the night pass, make sure she's dead, then collect her body the next day. Janet nodded in agreement. You're right, Miss Shandai. It'd be more prudent to wait till the morning. She'd be long gone by then, and not even the best doctor, or even God himself, would be able to bring her back to life. Shandai smiled gleefully, unable to contain the excitement bubbling inside of her. After a while, she removed her necklace and handed it to Janet. You've done well, and this necklace is your reward. Feel free to let me know if there's anything else you need in the future. Thank you, Ms. Shandai. Janet exclaimed. The initial fear she had from having murdered Ariel disappeared as soon as she saw the necklace. I don't think what I've done counts as murder anyway. After all, it was the snake that killed her. My conscience can remain clear. All right then, you can go back now. I can finally have a good night's sleep tonight, Shandai said as she shooed Janet out of her room. In her head, Shandai had started to picture how she'd let things play out as soon as she woke up. She would pretend to stumble upon her sister's body, and when it came to the funeral, she'd cry a river of tears for all to see. If my acting is convincing enough, people might even believe that I have empathy. Shandai knew the practice would come in handy especially when she had lofty ambitions to join the entertainment industry. With such stellar acting skills, gaining popularity and fans would be a piece of cake. The more she thought about it, the happier Shandai got. The night was indeed shaping up to be one of the best nights ever for her. Her smile never once left her face, even as she turned off the lights and crawled into bed. Exhausted but happy, Shandai quickly found herself falling into a deep slumber. The cherry on top was the sweet dream that followed. In her dream, Shandai was at a graduation ceremony where she caught the eye of Vincent. He was so taken in by her talent that he publicly announced he was going to marry her. From then on, she steadily climbed the social ladder and lived happily ever after. With a dream so beautiful, Shandai smiled in her sleep, blissfully unaware that someone had, at that moment, snuck onto her balcony. As the night passed into the pre-dawn hours, there was nothing but peace and silence. Everyone was still sound asleep when an ear-piercing scream suddenly broke the silence and rocked the villa. Even the birds in the trees outside were startled by the noise and immediately flew away. What's going on? What happened? I don't know either. I only heard a scream, like a scream for help. Hurry! I think it came from Miss Shandy's room. The housekeepers had all been jolted awake and hurriedly made their way to Shandy's room. Thankfully, Shandai hadn't locked her door, so the housekeepers opened it with ease and ran in. To their horror, they found Shandai lying by her bed, convulsing wildly and foaming from her mouth. Her face had turned blue, and it didn't seem like she'd be able to hold on much longer. Everyone was dumbfounded, with one asking the same question they all had, what on earth is happening? A few seconds had passed before one of the housekeepers regained her composure. She was about to rush toward Shandai when another yelled, Wait! Don't go over yet! Chapter 10 Slap What? Everyone looked in the direction the housekeeper had pointed at, only to see a snake glaring back and hissing at them. The snake was unlike any the housekeepers had seen before. 
It had a big head, and it had flared its neck as if ready to attack. Everyone was petrified and stumbled backward in a panic. Hurry! Run, the housekeepers screamed as they collectively fled from the room. Just then, Henrik and Cindy finally came to Shandy's room. Upon seeing the snake still writhing and hissing away, Henrik too retreated, afraid of getting bitten by it. Cindy's face had turned green as she shakily asked, What's going on? Why is there a snake? What's everyone standing around for? Someone go kill it now. The housekeepers exchanged looks of apprehension, no one wanting to volunteer to take out the snake. To let any of them deal with a venomous cobra would be akin to sending them to their deaths. Nobody was going to take that risk. Janet, who had taken her time to come up, was now paralyzed by fear. Isn't that the snake I released into Ariel's room? What is it doing here? Even carrying the box with the cobra earlier was enough to turn Janet's legs into jelly. Now she was even more afraid to go any nearer because she knew how venomous the cobra was. Janet knew Shondai would be dead if she weren't given the anti-venom within the hour. Yet, that was something she had to keep to herself, no matter how much it pained her. Seeing how no one was keen to take any action, Cindy tugged at Henrik and cried desperately, Dear. Go kill that snake. Henrik, like the others, didn't dare go near the snake. However, he also had his pride as the man of the house to consider. If word got out that he couldn't save his daughter from a snake, he'd lose all the respect he had. Damn these useless, cowardly housekeepers. And Cindy too. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be in such a dilemma. Henrik gritted his teeth and bit the bullet. Just as he was about to step forward with a broom in hand, a voice rang out in the hallway. Dad, it's late at night. What's everyone doing here? Henrik turned around, only to see a sleepy-eyed Ariel in her pajamas. From the looks of it, the commotion had just woken her up. There's a snake in the room. Your sister fainted after being bitten by it. I have to go save her, Henrik replied hesitantly. No way. Ariel exclaimed, fully awake now. Dad, this is too dangerous. You can't go in. Cindy's blood boiled after hearing those words. Without a second thought, she raised her hand and went for Ariel's face. Given her reflexes, that was a slap Ariel could have easily avoided, except she decided against it at the last second. Slap. The sound was loud and crisp as the slap landed squarely on Ariel's cheek. Ariel's fair and tender cheek instantly swelled up with Cindy's handprint imprinted clearly on it. You be asterisk tch. You want to see your sister die, don't you? Get out of my sight, you vicious wench. Alfred, throw her out now. Cindy bellowed. Cindy's request placed Alfred in a sticky situation. Whether he did as she instructed or not, he'd risk angering either Cindy or Henrik. Unsure of how to proceed, he turned to Henrik to observe his reaction. Tears had started to stream down Ariel's face. Before Henrik could say anything, she cried out, Dad, I'm only concerned about your safety. After all, you're the head of the family. What would we do if something happened to you? I've only just found you, Dad. I can't lose you. Ariel's words, so honest and sincere, cut Henrik to the heart. She's right. As head of the family, everyone's survival depends on me. If something were to happen to me, they wouldn't have it easy either. Of course, only my precious daughter knows me best and can empathize with me. To hell with everyone else. With that thought, Henrik furrowed his brows and glared at Cindy. Why the hell did you hit her? She's only worried about my safety, he scolded. But she clearly wants Shani, too. Aunt Cindy. Ariel suddenly interrupted. If you want to think of me that way, I'll just have to prove with actions that I do not wish for any harm to come to my sister. Ariel then grabbed the broom from Henrik and walked toward the snake. There was hardly any fear or hesitation on her part. Concerned, the housekeepers shouted, Be careful, Ms. Ariel. That snake is venomous. Henrik's face scrunched up in worry. Compared to Shandai, Ariel was more precious to him, and he couldn't risk losing her. Ariel, don't go. 
Henrik pleaded as he tried to stop her. However, Ariel brushed him off and continued walking toward the snake. Seeing Ariel coming closer, the cobra got even more provoked and launched itself toward her. Ariel pretended to struggle with dodging the snake's attack before swiftly turning around to hit the snake's tail with her broom. It wasn't difficult to tell that the cobra had gotten even angrier, especially when its hiss had also become louder and more menacing. Everyone else was so petrified by now that they could only stand and watch from a distance, leaving Ariel alone in the room to fight with the cobra. In their eyes, Ariel was undoubtedly the bravest warrior of all warriors. After a long and arduous fight, Ariel finally caught the snake, all while keeping up the pretense that she had done so with much difficulty. Get me a pair of scissors or a knife. I have a knife here, one of the bolder housekeepers shouted as she walked toward Ariel and handed over a paring knife. Ariel held the knife against the snake's head and shut her eyes. Despite looking squeamish and terrified, she eventually got the deed done. With its head cut off, Cobra finally stopped writhing. Darling, are you okay? Henrik anxiously asked as he ran up to her. Ariel was on the verge of tears, her nerves yet to settle. When she saw Henrik, she immediately leaped into his embrace. Dad. I'm so scared. There, there. It's okay, darling. The snake's dead now. As long as Dad is here, I won't be afraid. But, Dad, don't worry about me now. You have to send Shandai to the hospital first. Ariel said with determination. Henrik's heart melted upon those words. Not only is my daughter brave, but she's also considerate. She truly is my greatest gift. When he noticed the handprint still on Ariel's cheek, Henrik's face contorted in rage as he glowered at Cindy. Look what you've done. She risked her life to protect Shandai, and you still accused her of wanting to harm Shandai? Aye, Cindy stuttered. If you can't even tell right from wrong, I don't think you're qualified to handle any household affairs. From now on, I'll handle all the finances myself. Cindy's face instantly drained of all color. Dear, please, I only. Before she could explain herself, Henrik interrupted her, shut up. I don't want to hear anything else from you. I want you to stay in your room to reflect. And don't come out until you've understood what you've done wrong. Chapter 11 Find the Killer It was only then that Henrik remembered Shandai was still on the floor, twitching nonstop. He ordered the housekeepers to carry Shandai downstairs while he prepared to take Ariel along to the hospital. Dear. Please take me with you. Cindy pleaded, tears flowing uncontrollably. Shani is my. She's one that I watched growing up. I can't possibly stay at home. Despite how pitiful and terrified Cindy looked, Henrik steeled his heart against her. No. I want you to reflect on yourself. Can someone take Mrs. Southall back to her room? No one is to let her out without my orders. One of the housekeepers immediately nodded and dragged a crying Cindy away while Ariel accompanied Henrik into the ambulance. Dad, why don't we let Aunt Cindy come along? I can see how close she is to Shandai. Leaving her at home will only worry her sick, Ariel softly pleaded. Alas, Henrik refused to yield. He turned his gaze toward Ariel and sighed deeply. You silly child. Life overseas must have been tough, hasn't it? Not at all. Life was good, Ariel replied and meant every word of it. She had had a wonderful life abroad, and it couldn't have been any better. However, Henrik thought his daughter was merely putting on a brave front and sighed again. You're too naive. How will you survive here in Jadeboro? I'll have to slowly teach you the ways so you won't feel out of place. Thank you, Dad. We're family. You don't have to thank me. Before long, the ambulance had arrived at the hospital. Shandai was immediately wheeled into the emergency room because her heart had stopped beating. Worried and anxious, Henrik and Ariel paced outside the emergency room as they waited. Of course, Henrik was the more worried of the two. Both Ariel and Shandai were his biological daughters and were crucial to the future of his career. Now that something had happened to Shandai, Henrik was naturally scared to death. 
After what felt like an eternity, the emergency room doors finally opened. As soon as the doctor walked out, Henrik hurriedly went up to him. Doctor, how's my daughter? The patient may be out of danger, but will still need to be monitored for a few more days. This snake venom is especially deadly. If you hadn't sent her here in time, no one would have been able to save her. But, I have to ask, how did she get bitten? This snake shouldn't have appeared in Jade Burrow. Henrik frowned in confusion as he asked, What do you mean by that? We live in a manor on top of the hill. It's common for snakes to crawl in, isn't it? The doctor shook his head gravely. This snake species belongs in the south, so you won't be able to find any in the wild here. It had to have come from there. I think this is something you might want to look into. Henrik's face fell, finally understanding what the doctor meant. Are you saying that this could have been an intentional hit? That's very possible. Henrik clenched his fists so hard that his fingernails bit into his palms. Who? Who the hell wants to harm my daughter? His gaze instinctively fell on Ariel as a glint of suspicion flashed across his face. Ariel didn't seem to have noticed her father's doubts and fumed with anger. How dare they? Whoever brought the snake into our manor is pure evil. Dad, you have to get to the bottom of this. We can't let them get away with murder. Hearing those words from Ariel cleared whatever suspicion Henrik had of her. He was sure that a girl who had only just arrived in Jade Burrow couldn't have carried out such a plan. Besides, if Ariel had ulterior motives, she wouldn't have risked her life to fight the snake. I shouldn't have suspected her. Let's go home first, Ariel. I have to investigate this properly and find out who the culprit is. You're right, Dad, we have to investigate it thoroughly. The snake bit Shandai today, but what if it bit you tomorrow? Please get it checked out as soon as possible and bring the perpetrator to justice. Ariel said with a stern voice. Henrik couldn't agree more. Once I find out who brought the snake in, I'm not going to let them off easy. After ordering a couple of housekeepers to stay and look after Sean Dye, Henrik and Ariel left the hospital for the manor, ready to get to the bottom of the matter. Back at the manor, Cindy was busy checking her phone while being confined to her room. As soon as she got the message that Sean Dye was safe and sound, she heaved a sigh of relief. However, that relief didn't last long. After being told that the release of the snake had been an attempt on Shandy's life, Cindy seethed with rage. Just then, one of the housekeepers whispered outside the room, Mrs. Southall, Mr. Southall, is home. Cindy had had enough of being confined to her room. She desperately wanted to get out, but Henrik had locked the door and kept the key. After pacing about in the room, she decided to throw caution to the wind and broke the door lock with an ornamental stone. Henrik and Ariel had only just stepped into the house when they saw Cindy running down the stairs. Dear. It must be Ariel. That B asterisk TCH wants to get rid of Shani, so she brought a snake back from the south. She's the only one who had come from there. It has to be her. We have to seek justice for Shani. Ariel backed away with a pained expression on her face. Aunt Cindy, because of your suspicions toward me, I had to risk my life to prove my innocence. I did all that to save Sean Dye, and yet, you still accuse me? Now you're even claiming that I brought the snake back? Cindy pointed angrily at Ariel and continued shouting, It has to be you. I know it is. Stop pretending to be pitiful. Henrik, please, lock her up and begin the interrogation. Enough. Henrik bellowed. You've already accused her once, can't you stop? I will get to the bottom of this and give you an answer. Now, get the hell back into your room and stay there. Can someone take her back to her room? And this time, make sure she doesn't escape again. Once again, the housekeepers nodded and forcefully led Cindy away. Dear, you have to trust me. You have to investigate thoroughly. As Ariel watched Cindy get dragged away, kicking and screaming, she was even more sure that Cindy had nothing to do with the Cobra incident. After all, if Cindy had a part in this nefarious plan, she wouldn't have implored Henrik to investigate thoroughly. Perfect. 
Shandy's going to have to pay for her stupidity and viciousness. Ariel turned to Henrik and said solemnly, Dad, I noticed there are many surveillance cameras here, so you should check out the footage. You should also send people to places where snakes can be bought and ask if any seller has sold any recently. Henrik listened intently and nodded in agreement. Alfred, I want you to get started on it immediately. Also, I need you to check all the rooms in the manor, make sure there aren't any more snakes. Even though it was in the wee hours of the night, Henrik was raring to go. After the cobra scare, his priority was to make sure there wouldn't be any other surprises. After a while, the housekeeper in charge of the surveillance cameras came running back with his report. Mr. Southall, we've checked the footage. Last night at around 11, the only person who had left the manor was Miss Shandy's nanny, Janet. Janet? Henrik's eyes narrowed quizzically. Chapter 12, You Reap What You Sow Soon, Janet had been brought over to Henrik forcefully. As soon as she saw Henrik, Janet started shouting in panic, Mr. Southall, I'm innocent. I went out only because my useless son got into trouble again. I have nothing to do with the Cobra incident. Please, I've always been loyal to the Southalls. Janet's pleas fell on deaf ears as Henrik ordered for her to be tied up. Without any hesitation, the housekeepers did as instructed. Still ignoring Janet's cries, Henrik walked around the hall and found a leather belt left behind by a guest. Whip her, he ordered as he handed the belt to the housekeeper. Despite his initial hesitation, the housekeeper eventually carried out Henrik's orders. Snap. With just one whip, Janet's skin instantly split open. The pain was so unbearable, she started screaming and writhing on the floor. Ariel watched silently by the side, her gaze cold and unfeeling. It looks like the person who had snuck onto my balcony to release the snake is this old hag. Ariel was furious and felt no pity toward Janet. It's only fair that she pays the price for this. After ten lashings, Janet was drenched in a cold sweat, unable to make a sound anymore. Despite the pain she was in, she still refused to tell the truth. She'd be charged with murder if she did, and she couldn't let that happen. The housekeeper who had been whipping Janet couldn't tolerate any more and spoke up. Mr. Southall, we can't hit her anymore. At her age, if we keep this up, she's not going to be able to take it. Henrik understood the concern, and likewise, he didn't want any mishaps before he got to the bottom of the matter. Before he could give the order to stop hitting Janet, another housekeeper returned from his investigation. Mr. Southall, I've asked around the markets in the Southern District. One of the sellers said he sold some on a venomous snake at midnight. Janet froze when she heard that, and the subtle change in her demeanor didn't go unnoticed by the eagle-eyed Ariel. Was it Janet who bought the snake? Ariel asked. The housekeeper shook his head. I didn't ask, but I did bring the seller here. He'd also be able to confirm if the snake did come from him. Very good, Henrik replied. Bring the man in. Soon, the snake seller walked in cautiously and greeted Henrik. After getting someone to bring the severed snake over, Henrik asked, Is this the snake you sold? It only took one glance before the seller nodded. Yes, sir, this is the one. Some of the scales on its tail had come off during the transaction. That's why I recognized it immediately. Henrik scoffed and walked over to Janet, who hadn't dared to look up since the mention of the snake seller. He brought her to the seller and once again asked, Did this old lady buy the snake from you? The snake seller had no idea what was going on, only that he shouldn't lie to a man like Henrik. He took one good look at Janet and nodded. Yes, that's her. She said she wanted to try making some exotic snake wine, so I recommended her the most venomous snake I have. With a witness and evidence, the truth was finally out. Henrik pushed Janet away angrily and asked coldly, So? What do you have to say for yourself now? Janet sat on the floor shaking like a leaf. And yet, she remained silent. Janet, look what this has come to, Ariel chimed in. It's time to come clean about everything. Before the police get here, tell us why you want to harm Shandai. You watched her grow up, and yet you want to see her dead? Don't you think that's too cruel of you? No, I didn't. 
why would I want to harm Miss Shandai? She's like a daughter to me. Then who exactly did you want to harm? Is it my father? Ariel continued. Did someone else put you up to this to frame me? Or are you going to say I was the one who got you to buy the snake? Janet was taken aback by that last sentence. She had wanted to insist that Ariel was the mastermind behind all this. However, now that Ariel had brought it up herself, it'd be foolish to accuse her. Just as Janet was hesitating about telling the truth, Ariel turned to her father and said, Dad, call the police. Someone as vicious as her deserves to spend the rest of her life behind bars. Janet immediately looked up at Ariel and pleaded, No. Please don't. Both my sons still need me. Then tell us the truth. If you do, Dad might still let you off on account of your long service. Janet had given up completely. She knew what she had to do. If she told the truth, there was still a possibility that she could get away with it. If she didn't, she'd be serving jail time for Shandai. No matter what Cindy and Shandai had done for her, Janet wasn't going to sacrifice that much for them. I'll tell you everything, Janet cried out. It was Ms. Shandai who instructed me to do it. She ordered me to buy the snake and release it into Ms. Ariel's room, but I don't know how the snake ended up being in Ms. Shandy's room. Ariel immediately piped up, my room is very near Shani's, so the snake could have crawled over from the balcony. I just never expected Shani to hate me this much. I thought she had always treated me well. Ariel's voice trailed off as she stared into the distance in shock and disbelief. You old scumbag. And that little b asterisk tch. You reap what you sow. Henrik hollered. He let out a deep sigh and took a few deep breaths to calm himself down. Bring Cindy down, let her see for herself how her good daughter had turned out. Henrik had spent so much money and effort on Shandai, only to have her turn out to be so cold and vicious. What have I done to deserve this? Dad, don't get too mad, Ariel comforted. I showed up so suddenly that Shandai probably couldn't accept it. But I believe she will accept me in time. You're still speaking up for her even after all this? Your kindness is going to be your downfall. If things had gone her way, you'd have been the one bitten by the snake. Ariel shook her head sadly. Everyone makes mistakes. Shandai is still young. There's much for her to learn. Before Ariel could go on, Cindy had been brought down from her room. After Janet recounted the entire incident again, Cindy's face instantly paled. How could I have given birth to such a foolish daughter? Cindy had reminded Shandai over and over again how the time wasn't right to strike at Ariel. Not only did her words fall on deaf ears, but Shandai had even gone to extremes behind her back. I'm sorry, dear, I failed to teach our daughter. When she comes back, I'll give her a good lecture. Ariel, I'm so sorry. I've let you down and even accused you. But, please, forgive your sister. I'll get her to be a good sister to you. Seeing how Cindy had taken the initiative to apologize to Ariel, Henrik calmed down a little. Fine. I don't want to air our dirty laundry in public, so this matter ends here, Henrik said before looking at Janet. As for this old hag, she has to go. Get someone to send her to the farm, and make sure she doesn't come into contact with anyone. With that, Janet was taken away, never to step into the Southall residence again. Before long, Henrik received a call from the hospital. Mr. Southall, Ms. Shandai has woken up, but she doesn't want to stay in the hospital. She wants to come home as soon as possible. She can do whatever she wants. Henrik replied harshly. I still can't believe Shandai can be so vicious. If she has the gall to harm Ariel now, she might do the same to me in the future. How did my daughter turn out to be such a monster? Shandai had signed the discharge papers at the hospital and couldn't wait to return to the Southalls. Even though her initial plan had gone awry, she was going to use it to her advantage by telling Henrik the snake had been placed in her room by Ariel. Chapter 13 To Be a Decent Human Being This little b asterisk tch is so evil. Dad's definitely going to get rid of her. I'll be the one and only Miss Southall. Drive faster. 
I want to get home immediately. Shandai urged the driver. Soon, they arrived at the Southall residence. The moment she stepped out of the car, she noticed that the lights in the mansion were turned on. It was as though no one was asleep. Everyone must be worried about me. That's why everyone's still awake. I'm still the precious princess of the Southalls. With those thoughts in mind, Shandai gleefully headed toward the door. She could imagine the way Henrik and Cindy would ask about her well-being once she stepped into the house. When that happened, she would then point out to them that Ariel was most likely the one to get the snake to hurt her. That way, Ariel would have to pack her things and leave immediately. Wait. Ariel didn't even bring anything with her. She can just leave immediately. The more she thought about it, the more excited she became, and the quicker she walked. Just the mere thought of Ariel getting chased away made her giddy. At that moment, she had almost forgotten about the aches and discomfort she felt after getting poisoned and injured. Mom. Finally, Shandai entered the living room. The lights in the living room were all turned on, and the housekeepers were all silently standing in there. The atmosphere of the room was tense as if something bad had happened. That was not the scene she had imagined. Mom, what happened? Shandai asked Cindy, who was silent, like the others. Cindy then walked toward her, anger burning bright in her eyes. However, she could not find it in herself to berate Shandai after seeing her daughter's death-like pallor. Instead, she asked, what happened? Why are you in such a rush to leave the hospital? Right then, Shandai recalled what she had wanted to tell them. Ignoring the odd tension, she uttered, Mom, I'm fine. I'm back because I have something important to tell Dad. A foreboding sense crept into Cindy's heart, and she swiftly stopped her. Let's talk the next morning. It's been an eventful day. We'll talk when you recover. No, Mom, I have to tell him now. Who knows if I'll get another opportunity to get rid of Ariel like this next time. I can't wait anymore. Shandai felt that her mother was too hesitant. At a time like this, she should be decisive. Thus, she pushed away Cindy and headed toward Henrik. Dad, I have something to tell you. As she spoke, she glanced at Ariel with arrogant, gloating eyes. Spotting the look in Shandy's eyes, Ariel cocked her head, her interest peaked. What is it? Henrik questioned with a glacial expression. If Shandai admits to her mistake, I might forgive her this time. Yet, Shandai said, Dad, Ariel, was the one to let that venomous snake into my room. She doesn't like me, so she's trying to kill me. She's a wicked woman. Dad, you mustn't keep her around. Henrik froze. He had not expected Shandai to blame Ariel for it despite being the culprit. How did I raise such a vicious and stupid daughter? Hearing his silence, Shandai thought it was because he was reluctant to get rid of Ariel. Thus, she added, Dad, you can't give in now. She failed to kill me this time, so she'll definitely try it again. If she has the guts to hurt me, she'll have the courage to hurt you too. At that, Henrik narrowed his eyes. Then, unable to hold himself back any more, he raised his hand and slapped Shandai. Slap. The loud sound reverberated in the living room. It was much harder than the one Cindy had dealt with Shandai. Almost immediately, Shandai spat a mouthful of blood out. Along with her blood was a white tooth. Henrik's slap had made her lose a tooth. At that moment, Shandai was dumbfounded. What, is going on? Shouldn't Dad be slapping Ariel? Why is he hitting me? Shandai covered her cheek in disbelief. Just as she was about to ask why Henrik had hit her, Cindy ran over and grabbed Shandai. Don't say anything. Let's go up first. No. Why do I have to go upstairs? Shandai was frustrated. Breaking free from Cindy's grasp, she spun around and questioned, Dad, why are you hitting me? The one who's in the wrong is clearly Ariel. Why are you standing on her side and hit me, the victim? Victim? Is that who you think you are? Rage boiling, the rest of Henrik's words died in his throat, he could only pant in anger. 
am I not? I was hospitalized. The doctor even said that if I were to be there a few minutes later, I wouldn't be breathing right now. Recalling it now still sent shudders down her spine. Ariel's lips curled, but the smile soon dropped. Taking a step forward, she muttered, Shondai, why are you still refusing to speak the truth even at a time like this? Must you anger our father and give him a heart attack? Shondai furrowed her brows in disdain. When did you have the right to speak in this house? At that, Ariel lifted a brow. Shondai, it seems like you have no idea everyone knows how depraved you are. A tinge of guilt seeping into her heart, Shondai clenched her fists and stammered, W what do you mean? Ariel smiled. You really don't know anything, do you? Janet has told us everything. You've asked her to buy a venomous snake to murder me, but the snake slithered into your room from the balcony. Shondai, it's time to lay on the bed you make. Upon hearing that, Shandy's eyes widened almost comically. Janet, betrayed me? Abruptly, she recalled the odd tension in the air and the way Cindy kept trying to stop her from talking when she entered the house. So they all know the truth now? No wonder. No wonder there was a taunting look in Ariel's eyes. No wonder Dad slapped me. Shondai panicked. She tugged Cindy's sleeve and mumbled, Mom. At the end of the day, Shondai was still Cindy's daughter, and she could not help but feel upset about the situation. Pulling the younger woman into her arms, she whispered, Stay quiet and follow me upstairs. Shondai finally heeded her words. She no longer made a sound as she followed her mother up the stairs. Stand right there. Henrik demanded. From now on, you're grounded. You're not allowed to leave your room for a month. I'll be hiring a teacher from an etiquette school to teach you how to be a decent human being. Shondai took a step back in shock. Henrik Southall was the one to decide everything in the family. Without his love and trust, Shondai might be the one to be kicked out of the family. With that thought in mind, the colors drained from Shandy's already pale face. It was then she regretted doing what she did. Chapter 14 Billion Ariel watched Cindy bring Shondai upstairs with unsympathetic eyes. In fact, there was a solemn look in them. It seems like the slap from Cindy is worth it. However, this will be the last time Cindy will be allowed to hit me. Once Shondai was gone, Henrik walked toward Ariel and said, Sani. I remember you used to be called Sani, right? Ariel nodded. Her nickname had sounded like Shandy's name, so she did not like it much anymore. What about this, Sani? Henrik sighed before pursing his lips. Then, he said, I've spoiled Shondai. It's partially my fault that she has done such a horrible thing. We should have called the cops, but she's still your younger sister, and we're a family. Moreover, you're fine, and she has reaped what she sowed. Let's forget about this, all right? However, I'll still punish her and compensate you. Is that okay? Ariel balled her hands into fists under the sleeves of her pajamas. What do you mean by you're fine? If I was really bitten by the snake, Shondai would have made sure no one knows about it. By the time the sun rises, my body would have gone cold. Yet, you're asking me to pretend as if nothing has happened? You're only grounding her for a month? At that very moment, Ariel knew what kind of person Henrik was. As long as it was nothing threatening to him, he would not easily abandon Shondai. After all, the more daughters he had, the more chances for him to cling to a wealthier family. Henrik was a man who would do anything to get what he wanted. Ariel could not wrap her head around why her mother had fallen in love with someone like him. Ariel was thoroughly disappointed. It did not matter to her that Henrik was her biological father anymore. However, she showed none of that on her face. Instead, she plastered a sweet smile on her face and nodded. I can't decide, so, Dad, I'll just heed your words. Shandy's still young, so I won't blame her for anything. I'll pretend nothing happened, and I'll still be a good sister to her. I just hope Shondai won't mind too. Don't worry. I'll ask her to forget about this as well. No one will mention this anymore. 
I'm sure the two of you will be able to get along fine. Of course. Ariel smiled, her dimples emerging on both sides of her face. Anyone who looked at her would assume that she was innocent and sensible. Henrik sighed in relief, feeling glad about the situation. Not only was this daughter of his pretty and forgiving, but she was also obedient. She's much more obedient than I thought she would be. That's good. She'll be easy to control. It's getting late. I'm sure you must have been shocked today too. Rest earlier. Tell me what you need, and I'll do my best to fulfill your requests. Henrik was in a good mood. For once, the miser was not stingy, for he handed Ariel another card. There's one million in this. In total, you'll have two million, including the other million I've given to you earlier. You can spend it on anything you like. Once you've spent it all, you can come and ask for more. You shouldn't live as you used to in the village. You've got to act like the daughter of the Southalls. I'll ask Alfred to bring you to shop for clothes tomorrow. Thank you, Dad. You're the best. Eco stroked, the upset from Shandy's incident dissipated from Henrik's mind. He then hummed a tune as he went upstairs. The moment Ariel returned to her room, the sweet smile on her face disappeared. Even if Shandy's stupid, she has Cindy watching out for her. On the other hand, I have no one. I only have myself. Balling her fists, Ariel slumped onto the bed, staring at the ceiling with lifeless eyes. Maybe there's nothing bad with being alone. Moreover, it's not that I'm alone. Dad and Mom overseas are very nice to me. And my brother, too. He's dependent on me. He must miss me a lot while I'm gone. To make sure they were not involved in the mess, Ariel had to temporarily cut ties with them. Yet, when she thought about her brother, the corners of her lips curled upward. Right then, her phone rang. When she picked up the call, she realized it was from a friend from Maranta. Sani, how are you? The other person on the line had an accent. I'm quite fine, Vance. To be honest, I'm back at my old family home in the country. Although I've encountered some minor matters, it's been resolved now. Why are you calling, by the way? Ariel was speaking in fluent Austronesian, as if she was born and raised overseas. Sounding a little embarrassed, the other person continued, You know I've been working on an island project, but the ending part of the project costs a lot, and I'm having issues with the funds. I was wondering if you could lend me some money, or perhaps invest into my project. Ariel answered, I'm quite interested in your island project. What about this? How much do you need? I'd be happy to join you. That's great. We'd be even better with you joining us. I'll be needing a billion. Are you all right with that? No problem, came Ariel's swift response. Upon ending the call, Ariel contacted her overseas personal financial advisor. She then used her computer to transfer a billion into Vance's account before asking her lawyer to sign the contract for the investment. When she was done, she then glanced at the two cards Henrik had given to her and barked out a laugh. The next thing she did was delete the history of the transactions on the computer. On the other end, after Cindy brought Shandai back to her room, she finally cursed at her out loud. You idiot, how many times have I told you not to do anything rash before figuring out Ariel completely? Why won't you ever listen to me? As tears streamed down Shandy's face, she sobbed out, I I didn't think things would turn out this way. But, Mom, you have to believe in me. Ariel must have been the one to let the snake bite me. I've clearly asked Janet to let the snake into her room. I know. Cindy gritted out. At the harsh tone, Shandai froze. Then, she muttered, confused, why aren't you helping me explain the situation if you know the truth? Ariel's a wicked person. Cindy sighed. I've taught you so many things, but until now, you haven't been able to read the room. Your father clearly trusts her now. Moreover, you were the one to put the snake into her room first. How are you going to explain that? Nothing you say will help you, you'll only make your father even angrier. Then what do I do? I can't be slandered in this way. 
Have you seen how the housekeepers look at me? Everyone in the manor thinks I deserve this. At that, Cindy was silent for a moment. It seems like Ariel is much more complex and difficult to figure out than I thought. I'll try my best to find out her history. Before that, you'll have to get along with her. Even if it's tough, you have to do it well. Pretend to admit to your mistakes and live in harmony with her for now. That way, your father will be happy. You know he hates family conflicts and disobedient people. But. I've been grounded. I can't go out. Silly girl, have you forgotten about how you're going to get your certificate in a week's time? Be patient for a week. Once you become a star at the ceremony, everyone will forget about this matter. All right. I'll work hard with practicing this week. I'll definitely stun everyone at the ceremony. I'm glad you can think this way. Chapter 15 Star of the Award Ceremony Neither Shondai nor Cindy did anything. Likewise, Cindy no longer begged Henrik to shorten Shandy's punishment. Cindy even took increasingly good care of Ariel, which Henrik approved. That incident with the venomous snake was explicitly banned. No one was allowed to utter a single word about it. Hence, the manor's inhabitants resumed their following days as if nothing happened. Likewise, Henrik returned to his and Cindy's bedroom after five days of sleeping in the study. By the sixth day, Henrik headed out with a bounce in his step, even Cindy had a glowing and cheery expression. It wasn't hard to guess what happened the night before. Things became so amiable that Cindy offered an entire drumstick to Ariel during dinner time. At this, a delighted smile crept onto Ariel's face. She responded in a sweet tone, Thank you, Aunt Cindy. Call me mom from now on. Cindy beamed back as she continued, I'll look after you as my own child. Just like Shani. She's not my biological daughter, but I've always cared for her like she is. So, don't hesitate to ask me if you ever need anything. Ariel scoffed inwardly. Not your biological daughter? I don't believe it one bit. Shandai is only a couple of months younger than me, which means that Henrik had an affair with Cindy during my mother's pregnancy. Henrik obviously won't allow this scandal to leak. Cindy must be up to something. Why else would she suddenly suggest that I call her mom? Still, she's got some nerve asking me to call her that. I only have two mothers, my biological mom and my adoptive mother. No one else is worthy of that title. Skeptical, Ariel looked at Henrik for help. Dad. I it's too soon. I'm not used to calling her that. She flashed a pair of puppy dog eyes at him. Her eyes rounded and became slightly moist as she put on a pitiful act. If this were an award show, Ariel believed that she would have won the title of most convincing actress. True enough, Henrik's features softened after glancing over at her. No man could resist Ariel's puppy dog eyes, not even her own dad. Henrik cleared his throat and consoled, that's quite all right. Take it slow, and go at your own pace. There's no need to rush into calling her mom. Thanks, Dad. Ariel then cast an apologetic look whilst saying, And I'm really sorry, Aunt Cindy. I'm sure I'll eventually ease into your new title. Anger welled in Cindy's chest. This wretched brat. How dare she refuse to call me mom. Even so, Cindy was better at tamping down her emotions, compared to Sean Dye, so she feigned a kind smile. I understand that this must be difficult for you. Please don't apologize. I should be sorry for pressuring you. Don't worry, dear, take all the time you need to adjust. After all, we've got the rest of our lives as a family for you to do so. Thanks, Aunt Cindy. It's nothing, child. The two played out a harmonious pretense as if they were happily getting along at the dining table. Henrik's spirits instantly improved, the exhaustion he felt from work faded away at the sight of this merry atmosphere. As the saying goes, a family in harmony will prosper in everything, I'm content as long as they don't pull any more stunts against one another. Just as Henrik thought so, Cindy parted her lips to speak. There's something I have to tell you, dear. It's about Shani. The mention of Shandy's name ruined Henrik's mood. 
He slammed his spoon onto the table and thundered, let me guess, you're trying to put in a good word for that brat? Considering how grave her actions were, I'd been more than merciful by grounding her for only a month. So forget it. Don't bother defending her. Ariel threw a suspicious glance at the woman. How uncharacteristic of her to blurt out. She's normally good at gauging situations before speaking. Surely she knows that this isn't the best time to defend Shondai? What exactly is Cindy playing at? At that moment, Cindy's face scrunched up in distress. I'm not pleading on behalf of her, dear. It's about something else. I'm just not sure if I should tell you. Henrik's frown lifted slightly at this. Regardless, he still growled at a dangerously low pitch, what's the matter? Cindy sighed dramatically, then pulled out a sheet of paper from her pocket. She stated, I just received a notice letter today. Remember the Crown Coffee Academy's competition? Well, Shani won it. She's the champion. What? Henrik exclaimed, he obviously knew about the competition. Its winner would obtain a brand ambassadorship contract with Swar Coffee, the internationally renowned coffee franchise. Henrik was overjoyed. He snatched the letter from Cindy and went through its contents thoroughly. When he noticed that Vinson would be an honorary guest, greed flitted across his eyes. He clutched the letter with trembling hands whilst his voice quaked with excitement. That's great news. Well, why didn't you tell me earlier? The award ceremony is tomorrow afternoon. At once, Cindy's shoulders slumped exaggeratedly in dejection. She explained, it's because of that rash mistake that Shani made. When I told her about the ceremony earlier today, she wasn't keen on attending. She wanted to stay home and reflect on her actions. That's absurd. Henrik protested. This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to mingle with influential figures. How can she not go? Has she lost her mind? When he finally broke out of his thoughts, he happened to meet Ariel's innocent gaze. It was as though she saw right through to his calculative schemes. Flustered, he cleared his throat and said, Shondai seems like she's realized her mistakes and is taking responsibility for her actions now. So I don't think we have to ground her any longer. What do you think, Sani? Ariel sneered internally. That's my biological dad for you. Truly a loving dad, isn't he? Nevertheless, Ariel wasn't one to reveal her true feelings. She flashed a gentle smile and spoke in a considerate manner. Dad, I meant to tell you a while ago, it will do no good to ground her for as long as a month. We should let her off early. Besides, she's not a kid anymore. She'll know how to discern right from wrong after making a mistake once. Plus, you can always enforce stricter punishments if she regresses to the making the same mistakes. Cindy, who sat opposite them, gnawed so hard on her lips that she almost drew blood. Ariel, that brat. When she puts it that way, it means Henrik will never let Shondai off the hook if she messes up again. It was just as Cindy predicted. Henrik's brows knitted taut as he declared, that's right, there won't be a next time. Cindy, pass the message to her, she'll be disowned from this matter if she pulls another stunt again. Anger sizzled in Cindy's chest, yet she had to play along. I'll relay it to her, don't worry. She knows that she's done wrong. Sani, thank you so much for forgiving her. Ariel looked at her with a smug smile. We're all family, after all. And compromise is a crucial part of being a family, even if Shondai wanted to kill me. Cindy's smile tensed. She couldn't handle Ariel's not-so-subtle jabs any longer. Shooting onto her feet, she then announced, I'll go pack my things for the journey to Narm tomorrow. With that, she paced over to the stairs, but quickly stopped halfway. Then she extended a friendly offer, tomorrow's a weekend, dear. You won't be going to the office. Why don't you and Sani come along? Henrik immediately nodded as he thought about Ariel and Vincent's relationship. Absolutely. Could you pack Sani's things as well? And get her some new clothes for the trip to Naram if you can. Yes, dear. Cindy finally let out a victorious smile. Humph. 
Just wait and see, Ariel, my daughter will become the star of the award ceremony. Chapter 16 A Chance Encounter Once Cindy left, Henrik's gaze darted over to Ariel. Sani. Tell me the truth, how did you meet Vincent? Are you too close? Henrik wanted to ask this long ago. However, he worried that Ariel would think he was using her as a stepping stone. Hence, he refrained from asking up till now. At this rate, it seems like she's too naive to question my motives. I may as well cut to the chase and ask whatever I want to know. This silly girl will tell me anyway. As expected, Ariel answered him without a sliver of hesitation. I don't actually know him that well. I encountered him by chance when my ship sank at sea. He was injured at the time, so I treated his wounds with whatever herbs I could find. It was later when his subordinates came for him that I got rescued and brought back here. What he didn't know was that Ariel had summarized the story. She omitted the details where they undressed and huddled up for warmth, as well as the truth that she saved Vincent's life. Hearing her story, Henrik felt both disappointed yet pleased. He was disappointed because he had hoped for some emotional entanglement between Ariel and Vincent, but there were none. At the same time, he was buzzing with joy that Ariel had aided the Vincent Knights hire. Because it meant Vincent owed Ariel's family a favor for her kindness. Imagine that. A favor from the Knights hires. That experience alone is worth its weight in gold. Wonderful. That's great, Sani. As expected of my daughter. Henrik chortled. He stared endearingly at her as if he was looking at the world's rarest gem. Ariel put on an innocent and unknowing expression. She flashed a quick appreciative smile at this compliment, then resumed with her dinner. The next day had arrived at the speed of light. All four of them departed Jadeboro and headed towards Naram. For the journey, Ariel and Shandai sat beside one another in the back seat. Shandai wore the Crown Coffee Academy's yellow team uniform. A soft and glamorous makeup was applied on her face, befitting her aristocratic status. In comparison, Cindy had prepared minimalistic clothing for Ariel. She also hadn't hired anyone to do Ariel's makeup. Thus, Ariel was completely barefaced and had her hair up in a simple bun. She looked like an ordinary high school student. Even without any form of embellishment, Ariel was irresistible to the eye. Her presence glowed with angelic purity, almost like a blooming orchid whose beauty was so rare that people could only appreciate from afar. She was the definition of true beauty. Not the kind that was sought after by many men, but a true beauty that made men reflect on whether they were worthy of being by her side. Shandai initially felt like the brightest star in the sky, knowing that her makeup was worth six figures. Yet, that confidence plummeted after seeing Ariel's simplistic beauty. Shandai now felt like a miserable side character, while Ariel was the lead of the show. Outshined, Shandai clenched her fists so hard that her claw-like nails nearly cut into her palms. Ahem. Cindy cleared her throat from the front passenger seat. At this, Shandai broke from her daze and refocused on the present. So what if Ariel is pretty? She's nothing but a pretty face that men keep around like toys. I'm the real deal with both the body and looks, the kind of woman that men want to make their wives. Shandai suppressed her anger. She cracked a stiff smile and said, Ariel, I haven't had the chance to apologize. So now that we're both here, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I shouldn't have thrown that childish tantrum and put you in jeopardy. Please forgive me. Ariel knew that Cindy must have scripted this whole apology, and Shandai was merely acting accordingly. Childish tantrum? Humph. What kind of child harbors murderous intentions during a tantrum? Regardless, Ariel cast a gentle gaze as she held Shandy's hand. Then she soothed in a honeyed voice, It's all right, Shandai. There's no need to dwell on the past or apologize anymore. We're family, after all. Caught in Ariel's tight grip, Shandai bit down her repulse. She desperately wanted to fling Ariel's vermin-like hand away, but couldn't. Hence, she resisted and continued to smile stiffly. Meanwhile, Henrik smiled contentedly at his daughter's reconciliation from the driver's seat. 
they went on their merry way to the airport. When they arrived, Henrik led his family through the check-in process and to the departure halls. Ariel trailed behind them throughout this. According to the regulations, first-class passengers were given priority to board the plane before others. So the Southalls had to wait in line as Henrik had bought economy-class tickets for the flight from Jadeboro to Narum. When it was finally their turn to board the flight, Henrik suddenly halted and looked in the other direction. He exclaimed, Mr. Knight's hire? Sean Dye hadn't expected to see Vincent at the airport either. Now that it had happened, Sean Dye batted her lashes and cleared her throat shyly to attract Vincent's attention. Vincent's assistant was reporting the progress of their recent project. Now that Henrik had rudely interrupted, Vincent shot a glare in Henrik's direction. Seeing how Henrik and Sean Dye threw themselves at him, Vincent's glare turned murderously cold yet confused at the same time. He growled, Do I know you? Henrik brushed his nose awkwardly at this. He was startled that Vincent didn't recognize him. Shandai, on the other hand, clenched her jaw in irritation. We've already met plenty of times. How can Vincent not know who I am? Is he really that forgetful? In reality, Vincent had an excellent memory. He was simply selective about whom and what he felt was worthy of remembering. Thus, he wouldn't waste even a drop of his time or mental effort on people whom he deemed unimportant. As for Ariel, she had noticed Vincent as well, but didn't intend to greet him. We're just passing by. There's no need to engage in pointless conversation. Henrik frowned at how Ariel was letting this golden opportunity slip. Nevertheless, he quickly introduced himself, I'm Henrik Southall. Surely you remember me, Mr. Knight's hire? You attended my daughter's birthday party a few days ago. Vincent tried to recall. However, he had attended four birthday parties this week, so he couldn't quite figure out who this man named Henrik was. Sensing the confusion on Vincent's face, Henrik briskly shoved Sean Dye aside while yanking Ariel forward. He then reminded, Seems like you have forgotten about me, Mr. Knight's hire. But perhaps you remember my daughter? Ariel was now visible to Vincent. He hadn't seen her earlier, no thanks to Cindy, who questionably stood in front of Ariel and blocked her. Vincent's eyes roamed over Ariel's appearance. Unlike the other three, who wore fancier clothing, Ariel seemed like a regular student. It was as if they were from different class groups. Vincent raised a brow, curious to see Ariel's reactions. He feigned confusion as he asked, Apologies, I'm not very good with remembering faces. May I ask who you are, miss? Ariel blinked. Did he forget who I am? Despite her initial shock, Ariel wasn't at all sad that he didn't recall her. She responded placidly, that's normal. You must see too many faces every day to remember mine. We won't be in your way now. Dad, let's go. Now that she had excused their family, Henrik couldn't prolong the conversation with Vincent. Without a choice, Henrik begrudgingly complied with Ariel's request. What rubbish was that? How can my eldest daughter be so inept at seducing men? How stupid can she be? Henrik grew more frustrated at the thought of this. It was evident in the way he quickly stormed over to the boarding gate. Cindy and Sean Dye were pleased with how things turned out. They stood straighter with delight as they watched Henrik leave. What perfect timing for Ariel to ruin things. I doubt Henrik will continue to spoil her rotten after this. Thinking this, Cindy paced in Henrik's direction. Shandai and Ariel quickly followed suit. At that moment, Shandy's mood soared sky high. It wasn't long before a mischievous thought flitted through her mind. Walking alongside Ariel, Shandai mocked in a quiet voice, Oh dear. I assumed that something special was going on between you and Mr. Knight's hire, but I guess not. I can't believe that he didn't even recognize you. Well, don't be sad. It's normal for busy men like Mr. Knight's hire to forget a country bumpkin like you. Sean Dye made sure to emphasize the words, country bumpkin. She stared excitedly at Ariel, hoping to see her face blow up with anger. Chapter 17 An Outsider 
yet Ariel remained emotionless as if she weren't the least bothered. And that was the truth, she truly couldn't care less about being forgotten by Vincent. She knew that the Southalls wanted connections with the Knights hires because of their elite social status. Despite this, that prestige wasn't what she wanted or needed. So, it didn't matter whether Vincent remembered her at all. Shondai scoffed when Ariel didn't react to her. Liar. Keep acting like you don't care then, Ariel. I bet that deep down, you're crying like a big baby who's hurt about the whole thing. Serves you right. Vincent would never be interested in a plain country bumpkin like you. Little did the four Southalls know, Vincent's eyes had burned holes in the back of Ariel's head for quite some time. He stayed that way until Ariel boarded her flight. Only then did he let out an intrigued chuckle. Beside him, the assistant's eyes nearly bulged out of their sockets. What's going on? Mr. Knight's hire never laugh. He's usually unsmiling, and some would even say intimidatingly distant. I can't believe he's chuckling to himself now. Also, this isn't sneering laughter. No. It's more genuine, like an amused laugh that comes from deep within one's chest. It's been ages since I last saw Mr. Knight's higher laugh like this. While the assistant was deep in thought, Vincent's voice suddenly sounded. He asked, Did you notice a difference between her and the others? There were three women in that family. Which is he referring to? The assistant had worked alongside Vincent for several years now, so he knew better than to ask Vincent outright. He pondered for a while, before recalling that Ariel had dressed differently from the others. Then, he answered hesitantly, indeed. The other three have donned well-known designer brands, while that young lady's clothes. Well, they seem like some randomly bought clothes from an unknown stall. Even with such a sharp observation, Vincent still shook his head. The assistant instantly stiffened in shock. Did I guess wrongly? Was Mr. Knight's hire not referring to that lady? Just as the assistant felt flustered, Vincent's voice spoke up once again, I'm not talking about her clothes. The assistant heaved a sigh of relief since he had at least guessed correctly. Still, he frowned in confusion. If it's not the clothes, then what is it? Within seconds, Vincent's facial expression returned to its usual indifference. It's nothing. Let's resume. Then the assistant dropped the topic altogether. He didn't dare to probe any further, so he continued with his report. On the plane, the four Southall sat in the same row. Henrik had been in a foul mood ever since Ariel's stunt. Because of this, he ordered Ariel to carry out several mindless tasks throughout the flight. She was told to move their luggage to the overhead cabin, then tidy their coats and put them into the luggage, followed by taking out their chargers, and so on. Everyone else on the plane assumed that she was merely their housekeeper. Ariel wasn't bothered with doing all those tasks. All she did was comply with Henrik's request without any complaints. Eventually, Henrik couldn't hold it in anymore. He boomed icily, enough. Get over here. Once Ariel sat down next to Henrik, he interrogated with a sharp tone, I thought you said that you helped Mr. Knight's hire. So why didn't he remember you at all? Ariel shook her head, candidly. I only did him a small favor then, so it's normal that he doesn't remember me. Then you should have, Henrik faltered as he looked at Ariel. I guess having a naive daughter isn't always a beneficial thing. If only it were Shondai who knew Vincent she would have immediately caught on to my intentions and tried to get closer to him. Henrik then huffed, begrudgingly, forget it. We'll talk about this later, there's still much you have to learn. Okay, Ariel nodded obediently. With eyes rounded and lips parted, she feigned a childlike innocence as if she didn't know what she had done wrong. Right then, the flight attendant approached them. Good day, Mr. Southall. According to your flight mileage, we're able to give you a free upgrade to first class. Henrik deliberately chose economy class seats, not only out of stinginess, but also because he knew that they could get a free upgrade. Pleased, Henrik beamed as he bounced onto his feet. Thank you, please lead the way. Shondai and Cindy stood as well. 
The flight attendant soon noticed Ariel, who was the last to stand. Then he immediately explained, My apologies, sir. You only have enough mileage for three free upgrades. Here, have a look. Three? Henrik's temples started to ache. Then who will go with us to first class? Shandai or Ariel? Seeing that Henrik was conflicted, Cindy chimed in, I'm sure you've realized that Ariel isn't very quick-witted. She won't be of much help at all. Plus, we're heading to Shandy's awards ceremony, so why don't we give the seat to Shandai this once, hmm? Henrik's face turned grim before he finally agreed. He promptly turned to Ariel and explained in a matter-of-fact tone, I can't help that there are only three seats. We'll still see each other once the plane lands. Ergo, it's not all that different. Ariel stared intensely at Henrik. Disappointment shrouded in her chest, but she couldn't show it on her face. She refused to let Cindy and Shondai feel triumphant. Thus, Ariel pressed her lips into a tight smile and said, It's fine. Sorry about this, Henrik uttered while averting her gaze. He then pranced away with Cindy and Shondai for the first class cabin. Shandai intentionally slowed her steps. Once their parents were a good distance away, she taunted in a low voice, It seems like Dad loves me more. You'll have to work harder to catch up now. I'll be off to the first-class cabin, so you rest up here in economy class, hmm? There's actually not much difference between the two cabins, save for the bigger seats and better service in mine. But hey, don't let that get to you. Ariel gritted her teeth at how Shandai was gloating around like some proud peacock. Face twisting into a mocking smile, Ariel motioned towards the first-class cabin. She then provoked, you'd better hurry over. Dad might change his mind and let me go with them if you keep dilly-dallying. Shandai panicked upon seeing Ariel's maliciously gleaming eyes. Then she grabbed her bag and shot straight for first-class fearing that Ariel would somehow end up in the superior cabin instead. Soon after, all three Southalls plopped down comfortably in their first-class seats. Shandai had even ordered a glass of the cabin's complimentary red wine. In economy class. Ariel could finally shut her eyes to rest now that Henrik and the others were gone. Her chest sank with sorrow at that moment. She was human, after all. She felt sadness like every other person on this planet. However, she was terrified of revealing her emotions and vulnerabilities as anyone could use them against her. So she concealed everything, hiding away under the guise of an unbothered girl. Fake it till you make it, she reminded herself. Just as she got comfortable in her newfound peace, a voice suddenly sounded beside her. Excuse me. Are you here, by yourself, miss? May I sit next to you? A man had politely asked Ariel that question. He watched her with a set of wide eyes as his throat bobbed, gulping anxiously. Ariel met his gaze with an icy expression. She turned him down, sorry, my family will be back soon. These are their seats. The man didn't need to be told twice. He turned to leave while letting out a wistful sigh. Who am I kidding? I'm out of her league. There's no way I can get a gorgeous girl like her. Although, I wonder what kind of man will be able to reel in such a great catch. Not long after the man left, someone else approached Ariel. Excuse me, miss. Ariel's head flung upward with a pinched expression. Just as she took in the person's face, her mouth fell open. Isn't that person who was reporting stuff to Vincent at the airport? The man proceeded to introduce himself, I'm Mr. Nightshire's assistant. He would like to invite you over to his private jet. I've already taken the liberty to clarify things with the attendants on your current flight, so please come with me. Ariel hesitated for a moment, then promptly nodded when she thought about the man who approached her earlier. There were many people on this flight, and she wasn't keen on being interrupted again. All right, said Ariel. Follow me then. This way, please. The man gestured towards ahead. They needed to pass through the first-class cabin to exit the aircraft. Chapter 18, he approached. She shot onto her feet and shrilled, Ariel, what's the meaning of this? Can't you suck it up this once instead of vying against me for the first-class seat? 
need I remind you the reason we're on this flight? It's because we're going to my awards ceremony. Mine. Ariel spat, coldly, relax. I'm not here, for your precious first-class seat. Shondai knitted her brows, before interrogating loudly, then why are you here? Right then, Henrik had overheard the commotion and joined in with a thunderous voice. What do you think you're doing, Ariel? And here, I thought you were a sweet and obedient girl. Was that all just a facade? Ariel was about to respond, but the man beat her to it. He interjected with a sharp gaze, I'm afraid you're all mistaken. Ms. Moore is not here for the first-class cabin. Rather, I'm escorting her to that private jet, the one next to this aircraft. What? Shondai bellowed as her eyes shot over to the window in disbelief. What she saw next clouded her thoughts with resentment. It was a luxurious private jet with an extremely sleek and polished exterior. Across the jet's body was an elegantly written word with fine penmanship, Knight's Hire. That's the Knight's Hire family's private jet. Shondai whipped around to stare daggers at Ariel, jealousy flitting across her dark eyes. Even Cindy, who had been silently observing, balled her fists after seeing the Nightshire's jet. Henrik soon snapped back to his senses and quickly asked the man, Sir. I'm Sani's father, and our family is traveling together on this flight. If it's all right, can the rest of us go as well? The man maintained a neutral expression as he pointed out, Apologies, Mr. Knight's hire has only extended his invitation to Ms. Moore alone. Not to mention, the three of you got a cabin upgrade but chose to abandon Ms. Moore in economy class by herself. Is that how a family should be with one another? Regret festered in Henrik like a tumor. Damn it. I should have upgraded Ariel's seat to first class too. If I had done that, then maybe I would be lounging in Vincent's private jet at this very moment. The man couldn't care less about what Henrik thought. He swiftly turned on his heel and bowed respectfully to Ariel. This way, Ms. Moore. Ariel nodded, then cast an icy stare at Henrik. I'll meet you guys at the airport. With that, Ariel held her head high like royalty and disregarded Shondai completely. She followed closely behind the man as they exited the airplane. Shandy's and Cindy's faces twisted with jealousy at the luxurious private jet that parked beside them. Shortly after, Ariel boarded the jet. The first thing she saw was Vinson, whose head was lowered to focus on reading a contract. The assistant spoke up, Mr. Knight's hire. I brought Ms. Moore over. Vinson hummed a simple mm in reply without even looking up. Ariel felt uneasy. Not knowing how to respond or what to do, she tensed with her feet planted on the ground. Thankfully, the assistant came to her rescue. He advised, Mr. Knight's hire is currently busy. You may make yourself comfortable in the cabin that's inside. Okay. Ariel nodded. She then cautiously walked past Vincent and entered the cabin. Once inside, Ariel's jaw dropped in shock. She exclaimed, Rain? The blond man lifted his gaze and gawked, equally as surprised. San, I never thought I'd see you here. Have you returned to this country? Mmm, -hmm, I just got back some time ago. Rain cheerily patted at the seat beside his, beckoning her over. Come sit with me. Ariel obliged. Once she sat down, questions about her current life came out of Rain's mouth with burgeoning excitement. He also invited, I'm heading to Naram for the Academy's award ceremony. If there's nothing on your schedule, would you like to attend as well since you are one of our Academy's founders? Rain was the principal of the Crown Coffee Academy and a world-renowned coffee sommelier. Back then, Ariel and Rain were the ones who came up with as well as established the Crown Coffee Academy. They wanted to create a place where coffee enthusiasts could expand their knowledge on coffee making. What they never expected was for the Academy to develop into a well-known spot for socialites. Hence, Rain created a restriction whereby only 10 students may receive the expert-level barista certificate. This way, only the elite, talented, and worthy coffee connoisseurs could receive these certificates. 
Ariel's lips curled into a devious smile when she heard that Rain was on his way to Shandy's award ceremony. She stated, what a coincidence. I'm heading there myself. Rain beamed at once. That's wonderful. The students will be ecstatic to meet the Academy's founders. They'll be over the moon. No, Ariel shook her head and requested, I was hoping that you'll keep my identity confidential. Rain's vibrant smile fell glum in an instant. He then inquired, why? I have some personal reasons. All right then, I'll be more than pleased as long as you attend the event. Ariel flashed a faint smile, but didn't say any more. Two hours of flight later, the jet gradually made its descent into Naram Airport. Vincent had already left by the time Ariel disembarked from the jet. Unbothered, she exchanged goodbyes with Rain and went to look for the other three Southalls. That's strange. Didn't we agree to meet up after getting off our flights? So why aren't Henrik and the others here at the arrival hall as promised? Ariel held her ground in silence. She knew that Henrik wouldn't abandon her because she was still of value to him. So she waited. Right then and there, a bodyguard dressed in a coal-black suit strode towards Ariel's direction. Beside him was a man that she would recognize anywhere, Vinson. Despite standing next to a tall bodyguard, Vinson still towered with his superior stature. Some passers-by curiously paid attention to Vinson. Their faces either turned a bashful shade of red or gawked as they vividly babbled about Vinson's appearance. That guy's incredibly handsome. Do you think he's a celebrity? No way. If he is, then he should have blown up all over the internet by now. Even those influencers can't compare to his good looks. Compared to the eagerly buzzing crowd, Ariel's skewed frown was an underwhelming reaction. She glanced briefly at him before focusing on her phone and dialing Henrik's number. The call went through, yet Henrik had instantly rejected. Ariel knew that this must have been Shandy's doing. Although Cindy is a wicked woman, she wouldn't be so stupid to use such sloppy tactics against me. It seems like Shandai is trying to get on my nerves by keeping me in the dark about their whereabouts. Game on, then. I'll patiently wait here for them. Noticing a lounge nearby, Ariel headed over for some refreshments. What she hadn't realized was that she walked right into the lion's den, just as she entered, the lounge door flung shut behind her. Ariel instinctively turned around but was shoved to the wall by a towering man. Chapter 19 Let Me Go Immediately, Ariel prepared to lash out. However, her movements came to a screeching halt when she caught sight of the man's face. Mr. Knight's hire? Why you? She stared at him and blinked in utter disbelief. Vincent interjected before Ariel could finish speaking. Why did you pretend not to recognize me? Ariel looked at Vincent with a gaze full of puzzlement. On the other hand, Vincent's stare resembled the look of a ferocious and enraged lion. Is he angry because I didn't greet him when I walked past him earlier? Doesn't that mean he recognized me? Then why did he act like we were strangers in the airport? He even ignored me when we were on the plane. You were the one who ignored me first. Besides, how would I dare disturb such a busy man like you? Ariel replied in bafflement. What on earth is he thinking? He clearly recognized me. Yet, he pretended like he didn't. He should have continued the act. Why is he cornering and berating me for doing the same thing? Ariel tried to push Vincent away to put some distance between them. No matter what, you should let me go first. People will misunderstand if they see us like this. Ariel's words seemed to go in one ear and out the other. Vincent's gaze remained fixated intently on hers. He found that her bright eyes were like pools of clear water. At the same time, her gaze was as deep as the bottomless ocean. There wasn't a trace of fear nor flattery present in her brilliant gaze. The only thing Vincent saw was suspicion. She treated him like he was an ordinary person. An ordinary person. How long has it been since someone treated me this way? Are you angry because I couldn't recognize you at the airport? I did not get angry, Ariel said and jutted out her bottom lip. Why would I get mad? 
Vincent fell silent after he heard her answer. He could not express the complicated feelings within his heart. After a brief moment of contemplation, Vincent released her from his grasps and stepped back all of a sudden. Why did you come to Naram? Are you following me because I haven't given you an answer? Following you? I'm not as free as you think, I certainly don't have the time to be following you. Besides, what answer do I need from you? Ariel replied with a confused look. All of a sudden, she recalled the last words Vincent had said during the birthday dinner. Her eyes widened as round as saucers as she crossed her arms in front of her chest. Are you still thinking about the joke I made the other day? As I said, the truth is hidden within your joke. You don't have to worry, I'm still thinking about it. Ha <laughs> ha. Ariel burst out in laughter as she tilted her head. I wish I could peer inside that head of yours to find out if your brain is made out of cotton. That is something I should say to you instead, Vincent replied impassively. What on earth are you talking about? Right at that moment, Ariel's phone began to ring. The moment she answered the call, Henrik's voice echoed through the phone. Ariel, where did you go? Why did you keep your sister waiting for so long? Waiting? I haven't even seen Shandy's shadow. Immediately, Ariel acted as if she had been wronged. This was the first time I took the plane. I must admit that I was totally clueless. Dad, I'm sorry. Where are you? I'll try to look for you, Ariel murmured softly. Look for the airport staff. We are at the information desk. All right, I'll head over right now. The moment Ariel ended the call, her image of a prim and proper woman vanished into thin air. My dad is looking for me. I'll take my leave first. Also, let me repeat myself. I was joking, the other day. You can forget about it. Ariel called out as she waved her phone in Vincent's direction. With that, Ariel turned on her heel to leave. She only managed to take two steps before Vincent's suspicious tone echoed behind her. What is your relationship with your family? His question left her confused. We are just family. Ariel whirled around to face him again. Yet, I think that they don't see you like family, Vincent replied in a monotonous voice. Why do you say that? My assistant told me that you were the only one who did not sit in the first-class cabin when we boarded the plane. Oh, that's what you are referring to, I have a complicated relationship with my family. Ten years ago, I went missing. Now that we are reunited, these trivial issues don't matter to me anymore. Ariel grinned as she said this. Vincent opened his mouth as if to say something. A look of hesitancy painted his face. In the end, he handed her a gold business card. Call me if you need anything. You can also bring this card to the Knights Hire Group if you want to meet me. It's all right, Ariel raised her hands to decline him. Yet, Vincent merely shoved the card into her palm before he left the lounge. Ariel glanced at the gold card in her hand. Emblazoned on the card were the words, Knight's Hire Group. Is he trying to, show off? Ariel owned a company located overseas. Although it wasn't as renowned as Knight's Hire Group, her company was quite famous too. Just as she made a move to discard the card, she changed her mind and kept it instead. Vincent is correct, what if I need his help? This card will be useful. After all, Jade Burrow is a place I'm unfamiliar with. Ariel placed the card in her pocket as she changed her mind and walked out of the lounge. When she finally arrived at the information desk, Henrik looked like he was on the verge of exploding in anger. It was clear that he was impatient after waiting for her. There will be dire consequences if you delay your sister's ceremony. Henrik scowled. In contrast, Cindy spoke in a very demure and gentle tone. It's still early. She won't delay the ceremony. I was just scared that Ariel would have gotten lost in this foreign place. Ariel, look at your sister, she was so worried that she burst into tears when she couldn't find you at the exit. Ariel turned to look at Shandai. True to Cindy's words, Shandy's eyes were red and swollen. There were even glistening tears around the corners of her eyes. Ariel, it's all right. 
I'm just glad that you are safe. Shondai sniffled as she said this. When Ariel shifted her gaze downwards, Ariel caught sight of several red gashes across Shandy's thigh underneath her skirt. In order to make Hendrick scold Ariel, Shondai had resorted to such extreme tricks and schemes. When Shondai noticed Ariel's gaze, she quickly used her hand to cover her thigh. Immediately, Ariel looked away under the pretense that she hadn't noticed anything. She did not provide an excuse to Henrik. Instead, she apologized profusely. Dad, I'm so sorry that I made everyone worry. I'll make sure to sit next to everyone so that this incident won't happen again. Ariel's face was pale as she murmured apologetically. Upon hearing Ariel's statement, Henrik finally remembered that they had booked first-class seats on the plane. On the other hand, Ariel sat in the economy class. Henrik coughed awkwardly. It seemed like he couldn't find it in himself to remain mad at her anymore. It's fine. Let's go. We'll be late if we don't set off now. All right. Ariel nodded her head obediently. She even reached out to help Cindy with her luggage. In the blink of an eye, Henrik's anger dissipated. Yet, this experience seemed to show that his eldest daughter was someone compliant and weak-willed. Perhaps I should shift all of my attention to Shondai instead. In a flash, Shondai garnered his love and attention again. Henrik went out of his way to book the hotel located closest to the ceremony. He even reserved a suite just for Shondai. In the room, Shondai was utterly delighted. Mom, isn't my plan brilliant? She beamed and asked Cindy. I told you not to make any move behind my back. Cindy did not seem to share Shandy's joy. Instead, a deep frown graced her forehead. Seeing Cindy's anger, Shandai tugged on her arm in a coy manner. Mom, don't be angry anymore. Wasn't the final result satisfactory? Cindy suddenly remembered that Henrik had arranged for Ariel to stay at the cheapest room in the hotel. Immediately, her mood brightened. You rascal. The next time you try to do anything, you should let me know first, Cindy chastised Shondai and flicked her nose mischievously. Relax, Ariel isn't as strong as you claim to be. I bet she's throwing an enormous tantrum right now. On the other hand, Cindy was deep in thought. Anyone who fell into Shandy's schemes would have lashed out or defended themselves. Yet, Ariel did not. She merely admitted her mistake and tried to improve her flaws. This means that Ariel is someone who can endure hardships and stay calm, despite being blamed. She would be extremely dangerous if she decides to lash out. Darling, listen to me. I've thought about it. You should just receive your trophy obediently. Don't try to say anything else. We should try out best to understand her. There will be plenty of chances to deal with her in the future, Cindy said solemnly. All right, Mom. Shondai nodded her head in agreement. Chapter 20 Masquerading in Sheepskin Inside Ariel's Room Ariel felt neither unhappy nor unsettled in any way as she surveyed the modestly decorated interior of the hotel room. Never mind that she had temporarily fallen out of favor with Henrik, her very presence had already thrown this family into disarray, and amidst the ensuing chaos, she reckoned that she would surely find the truth which she sought. The ceremony would begin in half an hour. Before leaving the room behind, Ariel went before the mirror to straighten out her disheveled hair. The girl staring back at her in the reflection looked unbelievably fetching, cultish and acquiescent, but only she herself knew this to be a mere facade. A wolf masquerading in sheep skin bit faster, more incisively, and viciously, and left no chances for its enemies. The venue for the ceremony was extravagantly luxurious, with the aroma of coffee from the sampling stations of the various sponsoring roasters saturating the air inside. Shondai picked up a cup at the moment she entered and took a whiff from it before tilting her head toward Henrik. This is pretty good, smells full-bodied. And judging from its form, I reckon that it should be from Corleon. The sponsor at the side approached appreciatively when he incidentally overheard her. You've a good eye, Mississippi. Our beans are indeed sourced from Corleone. 
The man's effusive praise for Shondai made Henrik's heart swell with joy as he looked proudly at her. While Shondai was basking in her moment of glory, she lifted her head to see that sponsor looking absolutely mesmerized by Ariel. Shondai had no doubt that the man would start drooling were he to carry on ogling, and that irked her to no end. Although Shondai was a little over twenty just as Ariel was, the former still came across as a young lass who had yet to shake off her own girlishness. In a few more years, there would be no telling whether Shondai herself would even be fit enough to be a complimentary leaf to the ravishing rose that Ariel could become. The very thought of that had Shondai gnashing her teeth and wishing for Ariel to disappear. She thought that a country girl like Ariel should not show up and mess up her life like this. Shondai took two steps to her left to block off the man's line of sight and harbored deviousness in her eyes when she picked up a cup of coffee in the same motion. She shoved the beverage into Ariel's hands and said, Have a taste of their coffee too, Ariel. I thought it's rather decent. Before Ariel could respond, Shondai pressed a hand to her own mouth as if she had hit upon a realization. I forgot that you've always stayed in the countryside, so you must not have taken coffee before, haven't you? The sparkle vanished from the sponsor's eyes behind her. He was looking for an ambassador for his company and had thought Ariel's outwardly appearance fit the bill. It did not occur to him that she was from the countryside and had not even drank coffee before. As lovely as the girl was, he deemed her unsuitable, or even undesirable, as a brand ambassador since such an appointment would likely be received negatively by netizens. Ariel paid little heed toward Shandy's comments and only wished to taste it for herself. The result of her sampling drew a frown from her. Too bitter. As fragrant as the coffee smelled, it was too acrid to the taste buds and apart from the bitterness, there was little complexity to the aftertaste, the quality was not all that Shondai made it out to be. Shondai snatched the cup back from Ariel, adamant in the view that it was Ariel who did not understand coffee. What does a country bumpkin like her know about coffee? Ariel's response was exactly as Shondai anticipated, and that greatly pleased her. The latter then turned to the sponsor apologetically. I'm sorry, mister. It's not that your coffee isn't good, but my sister here doesn't know how to appreciate it. The man became more certain than ever that Ariel, who did not understand his product at all, should not be up for consideration. Once again, he regarded Shondai smilingly. That's okay, since not everyone is a coffee lover. In that case, I'll be taking my leave. Good day, ladies. The sponsor nodded at Shondai before turning away. Henrik was thoughtful as he watched the man depart, believing his younger daughter to be far more capable than his elder girl. Afraid that Henrik might be upset, Cindy purposefully chided, Really, Shani? Why did you have to let your sister drink coffee in front of so many people? Shandy's appeared quite indignant. It just slipped my mind. Henrik waved it off. The girl had always been forgetful, but Ariel, how could you tell the sponsor in his face that his coffee was bitter? You've really embarrassed me back there. With her head bowed, Ariel lowered her gaze apologetically. I'm sorry, Dad. Don't be mad. Bah, forget it. Henrik looked away in annoyance before he regarded Shandai. It's almost time, so you should go prepare yourself backstage. Dad and Mom would be waiting out there for you to receive your prize. Okay, Dad. Shandai smiled pleasantly and waved to Cindy before she took her pass backstage, while Ariel followed Henrik and Cindy to the gallery. Whether by accident or intent, Ariel found herself left far behind by a Henrik who looked like he was trying to keep his distance from something repugnant, acting as if they did not arrive together. Well, that was her dad. A good father, who would happily toss her aside once she no longer proved useful. Ariel's eyes darkened in wistfulness, albeit for a second, but she kept her own emotions in check and continued walking pliantly behind Henrik. The ceremony commenced shortly after they were seated. The number of visitors on the day was more than usual, primarily because of the presence of Vincent Knight's hire as one of the guest of honors this year. Many had fought tooth and nail to secure a slot at the event just for the opportunity to get close to him. 
Finally, the guests emerged after the introduction by the host, starting with one of the founders of Crown Coffee Academy, followed by a renowned barista in the industry, and then Rain Evans, who Ariel ran into earlier on the plane. Last but not least, the host welcomed in the final guest. Please put your hands together for the CEO of Knights Hire Group, Vincent Knights Hire. The rapturous reception at the mention of his name ignited went far to illustrate that more than half of the crowd were here for him. Those mounted video cameras were promptly directed toward the door leading backstage. At the end of the ceremony, the technicians would edit the footage and post it onto Crown Coffee Academy's official blog. The documentation of the ceremony each year would receive extra attention largely because of Vincent's expected appearance. When Vincent strolled on hurriedly to the front of the stage to greet the audience, he suddenly caught sight of a familiar face. Is that... Ariel? His gaze lingered upon her for a while before pulling away. He then extended a bow to the people gathered in the seats. Hello everyone, I'm Vincent Knights Heyer. The applause from the audience grew ever more fervent. Seeing the positive response from the audience, the host called after him while he was about to take his place amongst the other guests. Look at the crowd, Mr. Knight's hire. Why don't you share a few more words with us? Vincent considered turning down the invitation, but could not help but agree when his thoughts came to that someone seated in the gallery. He cleared his throat and unprecedentedly added, It's an honor to be able to attend the awards ceremony at the invitation of Crown Coffee Academy. Today, I shall be announcing the brand ambassador for Swar Coffee after the prize giving. These words, which were amplified by the sound system, reached the ears of Shondai backstage and sent her heart racing. Her eyes lighted up as though she would be accelerating to the highest point in her life within the next second. Becoming an ambassador for Swar Coffee meant that she would be able to meet with Vincent in person, quite often, and that could only help her secure a role in Sam's new film and catapult her into the upper echelons of society, pure icing on the cake. The very notion of that made Shondai grip her fists tightly. Being the champion meant that the role of brand ambassador was surely hers for the taking. Meanwhile, at the front of the stage, the host warmed up the crowd and saw Vincent to his seat before inviting the presiding judge Rain on stage. Rain was all smiles and glanced ambiguously in Ariel's direction before he turned to regard the audience. Thank you, everyone, for taking time away from your busy schedules to attend the awards ceremony. After some opening statements, he went on straight to the matter at hand. Now, we shall announce the results of this round of competition, starting with the second runner-up. With the second and third placed prizes handed out, Rain took a pause before he declared, Congratulations to our champion, Shondai Southall. Backstage, Shondai held her breath before she elatedly walked on stage amidst thunderous applause. A blushing Shondai then received the winner's trophy from Rain. Made of pure gold, the trophy was quite hefty inside her hands, but she felt like she was riding on cloud nine. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Evans, and I'd also like to extend my gratitude to my parents for their continued support. I'll promise to keep working hard 